Hello everyone, tonight we'll talk about top secret creature sightings government tried to suppress. This is our Saturday compilation video. So thank you for your support and don't forget to subscribe. And now. Story time. When I was around 18 years old I had been paying my ex-girlfriend at the time a visit and ended up losing track of time. It was around 1 in the morning at the time in the dead of winter I would say maybe late January or February. Whilst relaxing with my girlfriend I had neglected to pay attention to the weather or even look out the window at the time considering darkness falls in Lancaster County by around 4.30 on the winter time. A very intense snow squall rolled in and had developed into a blizzard. After I did realize this, as well as the time, I concluded that for some reason the smartest move would be to leave and make the around 25 to 30 minute drive, even in clear weather, back to my house. Where I live is rather remote, the Amish capital of the world actually if you are unfamiliar with Lancaster. But it is miles and miles of rolling hills, crop fields, and woods, with several small towns scattered about amongst them. About 10 minutes into my drive I am having a very difficult time seeing through the endless onslaught of fluffy snow, and the fact that I had left my glasses in my girlfriend's bedroom. I was driving at maybe 15 to 20 miles per hour considering the roads had not yet been plowed and were pretty slick. I got to a familiar portion of my drive about 2 or 3 miles from my old high school. As I'm creeping down the country back roads I can barely make out some sort of color in my low beams about 20 yards in front of me. Curiously I angled my front end toward the thing that I was seeing which was also on my side of the road. As I got close enough to make out what I was seeing I realized it was a hunched old woman. In some kind of blankets, and a long skirt. Instantly I was thinking this is my chance to be a good Samaritan and save a life. It was all of 5 degrees outside that night and this old woman was very far into the nothingness of the land with no known homes around. I crept up next to her and rolled down my window. At this point she was no longer being illuminated by my headlights and was alongside my car maybe around 6 feet outside of my passenger side window in the heavy snow. My initial thoughts are this old woman must have dementia or Alzheimer's, some sort of neurological disease. I called out my window to her excuse ma'am are you in need of any help? What are you doing out here you'll freeze. She didn't respond and as a matter of fact just kept slowly creeping forward through the snow. I used my phone flashlight now to get a little bit of a better view of her. She was wrapped in colorful blankets and had one sort of shrouding her head so I could not see her face. I also took note that it didn't seem like she had any shoes on. Once more I asked ma'am why don't you let me take you somewhere warm and we can get you some help. She stopped walking. I was already beginning to shiver just from the cold wind blowing in through my window. The snow was still coming down just as hard as ever. She just stood there facing away from me. Lady can you hear me? I asked, not quite annoyed but confused. Almost as soon as I finished asking this, the old woman swiveled toward my window and stood straight up. This tiny decrepit old woman became a presence like I had never seen. Suddenly the frail woman stood tall, taller than me, maybe 6 foot 3 or 4 inches. Her face was not hers, it seemed as though whatever it was had on a hyper-realistic old woman's mask and the largest most soul-piercing baby blue eyes I have ever seen in my life. So large in fact it appeared like they were not even naturally possible for a human to have, but nonetheless they were beaming at me from behind the holes that were vacant where the, the old woman's own eyes should have been. The sight took my breath away. Without hesitating I accelerated my car and slipped a bit in the snow. Long story short, I ended up getting home after calling my ex and telling her to lock her doors. I mentioned it to my parents and they said it was probably some sick criminal trying to rob some sorry sucker like myself. I say to myself that is probably all it was. But something about the almost animated movements it made. The way it seemingly added feet onto its height before my eyes. And its own eyes. I can still picture them so vividly all these years later. They were not natural, 
whatever I saw out there surely would have succumbed to the elements and in a small town like mine it would have made the news surely. I'm a believer in paranormal and ghosts and such. But that was a physical being. I just can't explain better than this what I saw, let alone give it a plausible explanation. My grandfather and his brother had a scary experience in East Tennessee in the early 20s. In their case it appeared to be an old man and it was encountered around sunset as they were walking home from working on the farm. My grandpa said they passed the old man standing by the side of the road. Seeing he was clearly a stranger to the area they tipped their caps to say hello, but the man just stared at the ground and didn't acknowledge them. They looked at each other and shrugged, kept walking. Then they heard a really weird sound behind them that made them turn. I asked them both on multiple occasions to try to describe or recreate the sound but neither could. When they looked at the old man they saw the same person they'd just passed, only completely different. They couldn't really explain that either, just said he was different. Bigger, taller, darker, something they couldn't adequately describe. But he was no longer looking at the ground. He was looking straight at them and had very bright blue eyes that my grandpa said took up his whole face. Two years ago, I went to go visit family up in northern Minnesota around Labor Day weekend. I will not give the exact location, but will provide at least a general location where this happened. To keep this short, I'm hoping someone may have had a similar experience, or may have a general idea what this thing or entity was walking around our tent. General Location, Mary Brown Bridge, Monaga, Minnesota. On that Labor Day weekend, my girlfriend and I were planning on spending time camping with her family. Both of us were very excited to get away from the everyday city life, and anticipated a much needed low-key weekend. We arrived at their location around noon on Saturday, and were warm greeting by everyone there. During the day and evening, we were enjoying ourselves with random fun activities and catching up on how everyone was doing. As dusk started to settle in, we all were near the campfire for a few hours until 11 p.m. Eventually the family and ourselves called it a night, and headed to bed. My girlfriend and I were offered to sleep in a bigger-sized six-person earlier that day from whom her relative who I will call Mary. It was a kind gesture at the time, as we only brought a two-person-sized tent. Having that additional space for our belongings and our air mattress, was a nice added feature. Mary's tent was positioned not too far from the campfire and the rest of family. The family did a wonderful job clearing and maintaining the area for their smaller RVs and additional tents. To the back of the tent about 20 to 30 yards, is where the wood started with semi-thick brush and trees. Us three were laying down chatting, and eventually they both fell asleep. For some reason I couldn't sleep so I was on my phone passing time hoping to eventually drift off to sleep. This is when I heard faint activity in the woods about 40 yards back. I dismissed right away, as deer are known in this area, and continued to space off on my phone looking at random things. About 10 or 20 minutes later, I heard thing get closer to our tent. I could distinctly hear twigs snapping and moving between bushes getting closer to our tent slash clearing. This started to get my attention, as I could start physically feeling a faint shake in the ground as this thing or entity was wandering around. Moments later, this thing was about 10 yards away from our tent walking slash running back and forth. Each step this thing took, I could physically feel the vibration from the ground. This thing was big, best way to describe this feeling is if you went to live rock concert and felt the kick drum hit your body. At this point, I was a bit terrified as I was trying to follow the footsteps running slash walking at the back and the side of the tent. This entity or thing got at least 5 yards near our tent, and suddenly stopped near Mary's side of the tent. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, scared of what this thing was going to do next. I shit you not, a few seconds later Mary shot up from being dead asleep. She gasped for air and was calling our names to wake us up. You could hear in her voice she was terrified. This entity hightailed off back in the woods, both of us were very startled at this point. 
The woods were dead silent, and eventually had enough courage to look out the tent. We saw and heard nothing, and about 30 minutes later ran to their shop to grab a shotgun. Another anomaly during this whole thing while we were alert and awake. Mary mentioned during this time I was awake, she was having a dream. She mentioned these entities were tormenting her saying they want her soul, or wanting to kill her, and to give it to them. My girlfriend dismissed the whole thing, and said it was probably just a deer etc running around. After hearing my girlfriend say that, I never told anyone about this story. Until recently, as I started to think about it again trying to figure out what the hell this thing or entity was. I have three stories. 1. Story. When I was 7, it was a very snowy early morning, close to Christmas time like it is now. I was walking hand in hand with my dad not too far from our apartment block when in front of us there was this very cool looking tall person, I thought before they turned around, with their huge black coat and grey unruly, almost spiky hair. When we got closer, the figure turned around and had the creepiest stare and smile on its face. A huge smile. And the whitest skin I have ever seen. I was in shock. We passed high and I asked my dad if he saw how that man looked and he said he didn't pay attention. I started telling him he looked like a vampire, I am from near Transylvania. He kept saying I have a very vivid imagination. I definitely felt scared and watched by the entity and will never forget it. Second story. At 14, I was walking with some friends at night and when this car full of people lit up. Like a family with their grandpa? Except grandpa had a huge head. The size of half the windshield. He looked like he could be 8 feet tall if not in the car. He had grew skin, white disheveled hair and a trance-like stare. My friends didn't notice. Rest of the family looked regular. I was again scared. Third story. Then, at 17 I was walking with Mayan a bit further from her house when we noticed this couple staring at us, yes, she did too. A human-sized couple, female and male similar in height to me. When we got closer I grabbed my aunt's arm and said whoa, are you seeing this? They had the same exact face with creepy eyes and smile as the man had when I was a child. The two had the same face despite one having long hair. Only these two had very yellow skin and deep under eye circles. Again, black coats. Later, at home, my aunt said they looked like they were suffering from severe hepatitis or another illness that caused the yellow skin, she is a nurse and tried to make sense of it. Again, it was scary and they were staring at us. I felt great though that she saw them too. Has anybody had similar experiences? Another weird thing I saw when I was a kid was a person disappearing without trace from above in our apt. My great grandma pointed it out and I was already thinking it. I walked from the front door to about halfway down the driveway. I begin to dump out the mop water into the grass, which would then pour down our slightly graded lawn into the drainage ditch. There was no one and nothing around me as I approached the driveway, and even if someone was coming my way, I would have been able to see slash hear them in advance. I remember this fact vividly because I would often check the bushes visually when outside at night since we had issues with a few chubby raccoons living in the bushes next to our house who would always steal the cat food my mom would leave out for the strays she feeds. As I'm dumping the mop water out, I'm facing the bushes on one side of the house, so my right peripheral view is to the street slash empty lot across the driveway, I feel that sensation you feel when someone is standing next to you, like the feeling you get when someone moves their arm past your arm or walks too close to you, the air moves a little bit and you are aware of another presence in your vicinity. And I saw some sort of movement in my peripheral vision. So I look up to my side toward the street expecting to see a raccoon or something usual like that looking for a snack. Instead I saw a very tall, 6 feet 5 to 7 feet, humanoid shape bending down and reaching out towards me. It had no face and it was darker than black. I don't know how to explain how dark it was. It was like Vanta Black. I remember dropping the mop bucket, 
gasping in surprise and backing up a few steps in shock and screaming WTF is that? Once it saw that I noticed it, it instantly turned around and ran down the driveway and then ran out of the beams of the driveway lights down the street. Its arms and fingers were incredibly long and its legs were almost smoky slash blurry as it ran. I say ran because it moved so incredibly fast and it's like its legs were a foggy blur. It moved so fast. I honestly didn't even have time to react beside the initial steps backwards before it turned around and ran down the street and disappeared. I was so confused and shocked, I froze. My mind was blank and it was silent, no bug sounds, no crickets, no wind, this is Florida in the summer, there are always creature sounds at night. I was too scared to move for a few seconds and I just stood there like an idiot. My mind was blank cause I was trying to process WTF I just saw, and trying to rationalize what it might have been. But the bright lights were on, and I saw it clear as day right next to me. What really effed me up was that it had no face, no eyes, just indentations where I should have been and it was blacker than anything around it including the shadows where the driveway lights couldn't reach. Meaning I still saw it as it ran outside the range of the driveway lights as a shadow darker than the dark around it. And its legs were like fog as it ran it was so impossible for me to comprehend I just stood there. It was almost like somebody cut out a humanoid shape in space and it was just moving around like a black hole where light couldn't penetrate it. It was one of the scariest things I've seen. Eventually, it felt like minutes but in reality I know it was like 5 seconds. The shock wore off and I was terrified. I grabbed the bucket I had dropped and I speed walked backwards toward the door of my mom's house cause I was so scared that if I turned my back to the street and ran to the door of the house whatever it was would come back and grab me from behind. My mother is religious but I didn't want to make a scene since my little brother was there and he scares easily. And again I was so shaken up, I honestly didn't understand what I had just experienced that I just silently put the bucket away, locked the front door and the door to the garage and went to my room. When everyone else went to bed, I locked all the windows and doors and closed all the blinds in the house. I was so shaken up that even my skeptical atheist ass lit some of my mom's sage and palo santo and I waved the smoke around every window and doorway in the house like I had seen her do when she'd do a house blessing. I literally was too scared to sleep. I stayed up all night googling what it could have been to no avail. I was a skeptic and it was just so hard for me to believe all the dumb articles I found that talked about aliens, and ghosts, etc. I'm not saying this to be offensive, it's just the state of mind I was in at the time. But I just couldn't find anything logical to explain what I saw. I even started to doubt myself, and started questioning my sanity. Was it a hallucination? Nope. I was stone cold sober, I rarely drink and don't smoke, etc. I was in a calm and happy mood, so not a panic attack or mental break, or something along those lines, no mental health issues, I had never seen anything like this before or since that event, and when it happened I felt the air around me moving as if something was physically there, like when someone moves close to you, you can feel the air flow around you. Could it have been some kind of gas I breathed in? I thought about how carbon monoxide poisoning in old houses can cause people to feel uneasy and hallucinate both visually and orally. Maybe it could be that? Nope, we had no gas appliances anywhere in the house, everything was electric. And I was outside in fresh summer air. Could it have really been a person and I just didn't see them clearly? No f way. I saw it clear as day standing right next to me. We were both fully in the driveway light beams and it was literally like a foot away from me reaching out to grab me. This thing was pitch black and way too tall and deformed, long arms slash fingers, foggy legs, to be human, not even a human in a costume made sense. No human could move as fast as this thing did and again, it was as if it absorbed all the light that hit it, it was darker than dark. I don't know what it was. Googling didn't help. My way of trying to logic my way to an explanation didn't work. The next day, I swallowed my pride and I told my mom what I had seen hoping maybe she would know what it was or maybe even reveal that I was in fact crazy this whole time and I didn't know it lol. 
Maybe she had forgotten to sneak me a mystery pill in my dinner or something. I was honestly looking for any answer I was so shaken up. When I described the thing I saw, she got all concerned and she got a big container of salt and put salt all over the driveway, the perimeter of our house, the drainage ditch, and our doorways and splashed holy water on the cars and around the house. We are Hispanic and it's sometimes common in my culture to react in this way to things that are unexplained and creepy or things perceived as evil entities. Even I got splashed with some holy water in her efforts to get rid of whatever the thing was. Being religious, she thought it might be a demon or the ghost trying to attach itself to me, as she said someone had died down the street recently in a shooting. But I just couldn't and still can't believe that. I don't know. I still get nervous at night when I visit her. And now I refuse to go out at night when at her house, all the chores get done during the day. Like, I'm not religious, or one of those ghost hunter people, I don't think aliens built the pyramids or any of that dumb shit, I actually kind of think that's a bit racist, but that's a whole other kind of worms. I don't say this to offend anyone who feels differently, or believes in aliens and stuff, I'm just trying to show you I'm not the type of person who believed in any of that. But whatever I saw, it was real and it wasn't human. I don't know what else to say, homies. What creeps me out, is if I really was crazy and the other people who saw similar things were also crazy, we wouldn't all be hallucinating the exact same thing. The details should be different at least if that was the case. Especially since I had never even heard any stories of these shadow creatures before. I literally did not know or understand what I saw, I didn't even know what to google when it happened. So when I saw others have the same exact details of what I saw from its pitch black featureless appearance down to the height of the thing. It just reinforced the eerie feeling that whatever that thing was, it was real and other people have seen it too. During the pandemic, my husband and I would go for rides around Mount Davis, Pennsylvania in southern Somerset County approximately 5 miles north of the Maryland line. It is the highest point in Pennsylvania. Neither of us was working. It was during the lockdown. No one was to be out. The date was June 22, 2020. We would ride around looking for deer, wildlife, etc. nothing else to do. There is also state game land, SGL 271. We would very rarely see another vehicle. That night the deer were bedded down along the side of the roads. They were acting unusually. We were on the main road coming up the mountain from High Point Lake. A deer ran out in front of us, stopped, turned around, and ran in the direction it came from, which was from the right. As we sat there for a moment, we were watching to make sure that more deer didn't run out. There was an opening in the brush and trees on the left. Something caught both of our eyes. Neither of us said a word. My husband had a flashlight and was holding it out the window. It was after 11 PM, so it is illegal to use a spotlight at that time in Pennsylvania. I was in shock and could not believe what I was seeing. In the opening right along the side of the road stood a humanoid alien. It turned as if in slow motion, bending its knees to turn, lifted its arm to reach for a limb, and just stood there staring at us and us at it. I had my phone on my lap. I wanted to take a picture but I had so many thoughts running through my mind. I thought what if I take a picture and it pisses it off. Needless to say, I didn't. We just sat there looking at it in disbelief and it was standing there looking at us. I told my husband to just go. So he pulled away. Once we got up the road a little way, I asked him what type of species would you say that was? He replied that he would say that was an alien because that is exactly what they look like in the movies. A gray humanoid type. So, in my opinion, I think there was more going on during the COVID lockdown than we were told. Back in 2013 me and my cousin had an encounter with the Mohau man, Bigfoot. So me and my cousin were both 18 at the time, we just finished our last year in high school and we were on our end of the year holidays and we both had no idea on what we were gonna do on our break. 
My cousin suggested that we go spend a week up in the coast with one of grandfathers. Now before I move on, we live in a small in town called Gisborne, 40,000 population. And the coast is pretty much the rural area near my town. All bush and forest pretty much. And our family has a homestead in a small settlement called Waipiro Bay. Our grandfather was happy we were there to spend some time with him. I was happy to be there too, just something about being in the bush just relaxes and clears my mind. Anyway after a long day of hearing sheep and cutting up wood, our grandfather told us that we should go spotlighting for eels for our dinner. We waited till around 20 hundred hours and off we went. Now my grandfather's house is on this hill and right below it, at the back of his house is this trail that leads to a creek trail, the creek trail is about a one hour walk and the sides is fully covered in thick brush. Unfortunately the eels were too small to catch, we get to the end of trail and turned back the way we came, as we were walking back we started heard these weird squeals coming from the left side of the bushes, so we stopped, turned out head torches off and just listened. In my mind I thought it was just a wild boar running around and my cousin said the same thing as well. We turned out torches back and carried on through the creek. About 5 minutes later we can hear the squeals again, but this time they were louder and closer and something was rubbishing through the bushes. We stopped, turned our torches off and listened. We both face where the noise was coming from and we could see this black silhouette staring at us. My cousin reached to turn his headlamp on and there he was. Staring right at us. The Mohau man. His face covered in thick black slash grayish hair, orange slash yellow bright eyes. Teeth like a canine, hands as big as my head. He looked at us and let he out this big huff and stepped back into the bushes and off he went. Me and my cousin both just looked at each other, lets this sigh of relief out and carried on back to the house. We never said word on our way back, just silent. We get back to the house and grandfather says no luck on the eels? And my cousin replies I think we just saw the Mohau man my grandfather looks at us and says yeah I've seen him around here a few times as well, I just leave him be. I was shocked when said that, I was like wait you've seen him too? My grandfather said yup, I've seen him when I'm out hunting. He's come to the house a few times too but he doesn't come to close though. So I just let him be and he also told us he didn't want us to go out and look for him either, like we were gonna do that, lol but my grandfather believes that the Mohau man is some ancient guardian that watches over the local forest near him. I'm 28 now and I still think night at times, the only other person I've told this story to is my partner, she believed me. She's also had some pretty weird encounters slash experiences before we met. The first one is a rather short story. It was a shadow figure slash doppelganger of me with woot wisps for eyes that stood in the corner of the room during sleep paralysis. It didn't go away when I stared at it, ONL slowly unraveling its long, black tentacles around the room until it covered around half my field of view, then disappeared into smoke. This other is a creature that spans over several encounters, the description is as such, black, thick fur, unnaturally clean for the things it does, white wisps for eyes, non-luminescent, skull for a head that was a hybrid between bear and wolf skulls, canine teeth, bear-like structure for the skull, 9 feet fingers with scalpel like nails, stood around 15 feet tall. They have gender distinguishing features. There is one in particular I am interested in, as it has been visiting me for quite a while, since early childhood, M20 RN for scope. The first encounter was in a 2D dream, it watched in the distance, out of reach. Much later on it was involved in much more vivid dreams, mostly having casual conversations, and when I was emotionally distraught it would listen and even let me emotionally release, like a therapist almost, but more like a friend. It has convinced me to be less violent over the years and even tries convincing me to forge a better relationship with my mother. There are other encounters with similar creatures but they were violent, some even were animalistic. I was on day 15-ish of a bender, I was getting drunk every day, 
day drinking, in a pit of despair and drowning my depression. I was contemplating self-harm regularly. It was a bad time. I was lying in bed, there was enough light to see my surroundings. I looked into my bedroom's bathroom, and about 15 feet away was a tall, about 7 feet, figure. They were pitch black, just pure darkness. They were draped in cloth, but it was tattered and ripped. There was a movement to the strips of black fabric, almost like it was standing in a slight breeze. The figure itself didn't move. It was looking at me, and I felt intense, primal, fear. Terror. Must have been maybe 45 seconds, but time was weird so I couldn't tell you with confidence how long I was locked in on this thing standing in my bathroom. When terror turned to anger, I cursed at it and it went away. This was about 4 years ago, and I've since cleaned up my life, got married, and have been very active in reading the Bible, praying, and reading books regarding the Holy Spirit. I was hardcore atheist for 25 plus years, but I have felt tremendous pull towards God in the last few years. Unreal, I would have never thought this was my path before. Religion is not my thing, but Jesus had some powerful messages and words of advice that have changed the way I view the spiritual world. I've never encountered anything like that black bitch again. I'm a fairly young person, but in my life I have had quite a few experiences of my own, and I also have some stories of my family's experiences. I can share them all with time, but today I'll be sharing my experience with something I can only describe as troll-like. It was around 2015 when this happened, it was 10 pm and I was walking home from my grandparents' house to my house. My house was directly in front of my grandparents' house at the time, maybe not even 20 feet apart. My grandma was on the porch saying goodbye after we had talked for a bit, I start walking down the steps and I hear a very strange sound. I've never found proper words to describe the sound, the closest I can get is horse hooves on a window. It sent shivers down my spine, my grandma played it off so I continued walking, at this point she had gone in the house. I was halfway home when I looked down the yard, at the end of my grandparents' house stood a tall, hairy humanoid creature. It was about 10 feet, it was huge, and covered in reddish-brown hair, it resembled a human in shape and features, but it just wasn't human. It started walking towards me, I couldn't move, it only walked maybe 6 feet before stopping. I just stared at it and it stared at me, it wasn't moving so I ran towards my house as fast as I could. When I got on my porch I looked back and it had started walking back to the end of my grandparents' house again. A few nights later my mom was watching me walk to my grandparents' house, I didn't see anything and got there safely. My mom told me that she saw the same thing at the end of my grandparents' house, she said it was standing outside of my uncle's window, it looked at her and she looked at it but it didn't move from its spot. She described it in the same ways as I did, we researched things together but never found anything like it. After that, maybe two to three days go by and my dad was outside at around 9 pm, he was making sure he locked the car, when he was out there he saw it standing under a motion light we had in the yard between our houses, he also described it in the same way. He said it didn't acknowledge him, but he quickly went back inside. The day after that my uncle left, for the rest of our years living there we didn't see it again. My uncle's room was at the end of my grandparents' house, he's not a good person and there are a few other stories about things like this when he was around plus his own story. My parents and I are sure it was there because of him, but it's still so creepy to think about. I've never found any creature resembling this since, I'm sorry if my description of it is bad. I'm not sure how to describe it, I just stumbled across this sub and decided to post my story. If anyone has any similar stories I'd love to hear them, and if you have any ideas I'd love to know. I've always been a believer, my family has too, I have lots of stories to tell, if you'd like more I'd be glad to share. The world is a mysterious place. I had a friend show me this underground bunker in the desert, we had to go through a tunnel that went through a steep hill, 
A short distance away on the other side was the bunker. We went into it to explore and it gave me a bad feeling, especially since I thought anyone could cover the entrance and we'd be trapped, so we left pretty quickly. I remember hearing weird noises and when we got back to the tunnel we could see a person on the other side. We approached and they basically walked out of sight but there wasn't really anywhere else they could go so we expected to meet them on the other side but when we came out of the tunnel it was gone. Heard another weird noise and turned around and the creature was on the other side of the tunnel and again walked out of sight. At this point we were freaked out since there was no way anyone could get to the other side without going through that tunnel. This happened years ago and honestly it was such a freaky experience that I stopped exploring altogether. I can't say what I saw but I strongly believe it was not human. If I had to make a guess I would say maybe a lizard person? This was witnessed by a resident of Lubliniec, Poland, who, most likely in September 2010, went by bicycle to the forest located in the village of Kosecin to gather mushrooms. It was a sunny morning. The man, after riding about three kilometers, reached his so-called spot, where he has been picking mushrooms for years. Collecting mushrooms in a bent position, the witness directed his gaze to the left side and noticed silvery flashes between the trees and some movement. According to the witness, there were flashes or reflection of something silvery like a mirror between the trees. Curious, he decided to go further to see what they were caused by. When he reached the forest road, about 30 meters away, he notices a concrete gray figure emerging from behind the trees, looking like a fat inflatable dummy. The creature had thick legs, arms glued to a cylindrical body. The head was necklace resembling a semicircular pot. The witness felt surprise and fear, which lasts several seconds. Suddenly, a second white-colored individual, about half the height of the first, emerged from the forest. The figure had large black eyes, a triangular body, tapering downward, diagonally girded with a sash belt, skinny arms and legs. Suddenly, the witness heard the question in his head, you are afraid, huh? Without thinking long, the witness jumped on his bicycle and rushed as fast as he could back home. The observation of the creatures lasted about one minute. The man stood only about 30 meters from the creatures and got a good look at them. After the incident, the witness had a period where he became very nervous and declined in health. It is worth mentioning that the flashes appeared in the area with overhead power lines. This happened back in 2008 in the Virginia Appalachian Mountains. I was looking for my cat, Zelda and I started to hear meowing. I followed the sound and came across a tunnel. It was about 4 feet tall. I went in the tunnel and found my cat. I also saw something. It was three feet tall, glowing yellow eyes, on all fours, and had three claws on each hand. It ran at me and it followed me home while mimicking my cat's meows. I still see it out my windows sometimes. If you know or have an idea on what it was tell me. In early 2019, one of my older cousins and I were standing outside of my house here in Austin, Texas. He was having a cigarette. It was about 9 p.m. and we'd pretty much run out of things to talk about. I opted for just looking into the night sky and gazing for the Big Dipper it being the only star I could typically spot right away. As I'm looking up I notice a dark silhouette about 10 feet from the top of my house. I live in a two-story home so 10 feet from my roof is pretty high up but yet still close enough for me to still see. I could vividly see that it was the shape of a human-like being flying from above my home and over across the street and out of sight. It moved smoothly across the sky not too fast, just at a glide. I stared in disbelief unable to speak. Long after it vanished behind my neighbor's home I still looked in its direction trying to understand what just happened. When I finally was able to gather my thoughts enough to talk I turned to my cousin who was also looking into the sky and said, Let's go inside. He put out his cigarette and we both walked into the house and sat in silence for about 5 to 10 minutes. 
The silence was broken by the sound of my cousin taking in a deep breath before asking me, did you see something flying outside? Before he could finish I burst out into rapid sentences about what I saw. Before I knew it, we were both going back and forward barely letting either get a word out. We decided that what we saw was real and it really did happen. That's not the most frightening part though. Several weeks later I stumbled across a TV show on Destination America entitled Monsters and Mysteries in America, I believe. The episode I watched turned out to be based on sightings in Austin, Texas. I couldn't believe it, the episode was about flying humanoids being spotted here in the city. It confirmed for me that what I saw was actually real and I hadn't been one of the only ones who spotted it. I still look to the sky on most nights. I know they're still out there. Last night when I was using the bathroom I heard a noise. Who has seen the film Annihilation, you know the bear thingy in it that mimics people talking, it sounded like that but kind of like it was choking or gurgling, then some dogs started barking and I heard like a raspy imitation of the dogs barking, then it stopped, dead silence, apart from the noise of my shower. About an hour later when having a treat after dinner through a split in my curtains I saw something dashing around but figured it was tree branches. Went to bed. Woke up. Did normal stuff I would do on a bank holiday from my school. Literally about 15 minutes ago my dog started freaking out and twisting her head and jumping and clawing at the back door as if something was outside, usually for a cat or squirrel she would do this. I was spooked considering it's dark and 4.30 in late autumn UK, you caught a glimpse of a tall shadow darting across my garden, looked like that of an ape or monkey swinging, I shined my 4000 LM torch outside but couldn't see anything anyone know what this is, I tried to tell my mum but she didn't think otherwise of it. I keep hearing things from outside like rustling, but I live in a populated town on a populated road. Thanks all for helping. When I was in high school about 10 years ago I witnessed a pair of slightly glowing yellow eyes looking into my house from the back door. The creature probably stood 7 to 8 feet tall and the only thing that I could see in the darkness were its glowing yellow eyes. I liked in a suburban neighborhood in East Texas. There was a room full of family in the dimly lit living room which was connected to this back door. They were eyes for sure not lights or headlights or anything reflecting off of the glass. I looked into this creature's glass like glowing yellow eyes and felt it was intelligent despite only being able to see its eyes and nothing else. It didn't necessarily scare me per se, I didn't tell anyone at all actually. I just turned around and smoked on my front porch instead of out back. Does anyone know what creature I might have saw that day? Do you guys think it may have influenced my actions by keeping me calm and not alerting my family members that were just a couple steps away? I think about it every time I see any form of glowing eyes. Which is pretty often. In the summer of 2017 around 10 PM I was in the kitchen watching YouTube videos on my phone when I decide it's time to go to sleep. So I go turn off the light to the kitchen and as I'm walking past one of the kitchen window that leads to the backyard I notice someone. At first I had this gut feeling that told me to look to my peripheral vision and I look out the kitchen window and I see a black figure walking across my backyard. At this point I am frozen with fear and I see this thing walking across my yard with its bright glowing eyes and I assume it noticed me since its head tilted my direction and it suddenly vanished. The figure was completely black and its body looked like it was made out of fog, almost like a black thunder cloud, and its only facial textures were these glowing white eyes. Also its outline of its body had a thin spectrum of colors, similar to the colors of a soap bubble when you look into it or the rainbow color of oil when it's dropped on the floor. I have no idea what to even call this thing but it was a scary experience, does anyone have a clue what this thing was? I kept seeing a shadow pass by outside my bedroom door, 
from the hallway leading to the bathroom slash kitchen areas but I never gave it much though because car lights would come through the window and thought that was the cause of it. Was seeing it often and for a long time, had a friend see it too and I hadn't said anything to him prior to seeing it himself. It all lead to one day where I actually saw it looking at me outside my door. At that point I was around 14, was playing Frozen Throne on my PC alone in the house and it caught my eye again. Only this time it was right behind my door, halfway behind it like someone peeking in. I've seen videos where they supposedly show shadow people but it was nothing like that. It was like a void slash darkness, not darkness as in evil, without any features. It was actually hard to look at because it was like I could see through it but not. I almost crapped my pants when it moved a bit, like it wanted to come into my room but it stopped there. I did the cliché hide under my bed covers and didn't move. Not sure how much time has passed, it was a blur but when I heard my parents and my sister coming to the house, it was like a huge weight is lifted off of my stomach. Years later I told my sister about it and she actually said she had seen something too. She was vacuuming our room one day when she saw a dark figure behind her. She panicked and once she turned around nothing was there. Thinking about it years later, it didn't feel threatening or evil but when you see something you don't understand, you basically panic. I'm 37 years old unmarried I don't have children. I live in an old ranch house. This began happening roughly two to three not has ago. It didn't start off bad I just heard something walking around my property which is sent too weird as deer walk near my home often. Things began getting weird when late our night I would hear people talking outside my home. It was only a week ago that I looked out my window and saw a tall figure walking around my property. It had long skinny arms and legs. I couldn't see the rest of its body but am not sure what that could have been. Last year, somewhere in Europe, I got up around 6 AM, I was fully awake, freshened up and opened my curtains, it was still dark out however there were enough street lights to see everything clearly. I looked outside and saw a figure standing with its back towards me, it was fully cloaked, and hooded, in white and it wasn't holding anything. I would describe it as the Grim Reaper. In white. It was stood completely still facing towards a fence, my heart dropped so I moved away from my window, only to look again to make sure I wasn't hallucinating. The moment I attempted to see what or who it was, it slowly turned around but best believe I closed my curtains before I would encounter the sight of its face. I panicked, took a few breaths and peeked in the slightest way possible but it was gone. Literally vanished in thin air within seconds. I assumed it must have been a shadow person, but those can usually be distinguished easily. This human was way too vivid. It never happened again after that one time. Has anyone ever experienced anything similar? I was fully sober, not medicated, no history of mental. A few weeks later I have a lucid dream, and when I have these lucid dreams it feels like I'm waking up suddenly to a dream experience. The first was two auras approaching me in a void. I read the ways you were to defend yourself in threads about gateway so I immediately set out to project energy, make force fields, pretty much whatever random stuff I can come up with. When I felt like I didn't make much ground I tried to meditate in my dream to either gain more energy, I don't know why I thought this, or escape. Well after a brief period of quiet and peace and nothingness I suddenly had loud static in my head, so violently that I jolted up, it was dark in my room but I could somehow see with a greenish hue in the room. I knew something felt different, I didn't immediately realize I had left my body but somehow I understand I needed to wake up for real and once I did the room was dark again. After this was strange dreams, sometimes of things harassing me. When I first saw an entity I was dreaming I was tossing out some bad mac and cheese, so overall it wasn't too strange, but this is when I woke up hearing three metallic knocks, I look into my closet and saw a ghoulish smeggle-like creature, 
I was horrified at the time but it honestly didn't seem to have much confidence or intent, it just sort of folded in on itself and disappeared. I'm skipping over several other experiences to mention my latest, I have done lots of research and still don't know what's fully happening. I dreamed I was being shown a room, and it was a picture of an alien, I noticed I suddenly had an unseen companion in this dream that would become the norm for the future, though I would never see what they looked like, I waved the picture out my face as they held it up, because aliens freak me out. I was led to the spot where I saw the entity and a light and vibration flooded the area, I was being suggested to look beyond that, but I refused and woke up. The next night I began to meditate slash pray and ask for protection from these dreams. My first bad dream of the night, as I began to feel stressed I felt a slap on my face, waking me up. I went back to bed, rationalizing that maybe my cheek just twitched. The second dream of the night was from the perspective of a teenage girl arguing with her mother, the mother said the girl should talk to them themselves because they aren't bad. She then hands the girl a phone with the text if you want to talk to us, just look up I began to stress out again, slight vibration, and then I heard a voice in my ear, not in the dream saying hi there in a soft female voice. This made me jolt upright. Since then I had multiple dreams with a woman in white. But lately 4 been sleeping with the intent of I don't have the energy for these dreams and somehow that has ended them for now. There are a lot of other things that have happened recently, but also it made me reevaluate things from the past. As a teenager I did see a blue floating orb at eye level, my mom would see one as a child as well. I used to have problems waking up for school on time, so I told my mom she should just try scare me by saying there was a snake in the house. The very next morning there was. Manifestation? LOL. Neither of these things meant much to me at the time, and I brushed them off, but now I'm much more open to the spiritual world. When I was around 10 or 12, roughly 12 years ago, me and my grandma and uncle went to Jasper National Park in Canada, given how I was born in Canada itself, nothing weirded me out when it came to the woods and nature as a whole. I've seen and heard deer before and a whole slew of animals. I don't remember much from the trip other than a bits and pieces, but what I do remember was arriving at the hotel and climbing up the steps to the second floor. The hotel had a parking lot in front before the road. I remember waking up one morning in the hotel while my grandma and uncle were still asleep and walking over to the window to peer out from behind the blinds to see a fox standing in the middle of a road. It looked like it had been run over given how oddly it was shaped. Concerned for its safety I wanted to wake up my grandma or simply run out there to check on it. I felt my stomach sink when it turned to face at me, its head looked bruised and mishappen. Which I would have ruled out as it having been run over had it not stood on its hind legs. I turned my head away from the window and yelled for my grandma to wake up who slept in her bed just a couple feet away before I looked back and saw it walk on those hind legs to the side where the building hid my view from the rest of the road. I looked completely insane when my grandma moved me aside and saw nothing on the road, even going as far as to open the door and peer down both both ends of the walkway. Nothing. Regardless, I can say with confidence I'm not going back to Jasper. I am currently living with my partner on an outback property in Australia. Our neighbors are across the road, pretty big driveways on both our properties though, but still close enough to see their house clearly and whatnot. There's cows in the paddocks that surround our property, we could go up and pet them if we wanted to. And there's sheep a couple paddocks over, but they're far enough from the property that they're like white dots in my vision, you never hear the sheep, only the cows. We have our Christmas lights set up now, and they have timers set so that they're on from like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. From the room we're staying in, they wrap around the whole veranda facing the neighbor's house. We can see the lights through our two windows, and I really like to have the blinds up at night because of this. Anyways at around 10 p.m. my partner and I were settling down for sleep in our room. He notices that the cows are making noises like the sheep and we joked about this for a bit, he even joked that it could be a skinwalker, 
I however did not find that funny, because I've heard that even talking about it, let alone joking about it, could attract them, I'm a believer, so I was getting bad vibes after he said that. He falls asleep and I'm just watching videos on my phone and playing games, occasionally I'll hear the same sheep noises, they genuinely sounded like actual sheep, so I was pretty freaked out. The Christmas lights made me feel protected at least a tiny bit protected, because I felt like they'd be sensitive to the light and wouldn't want to be too close to it, that being said, I also felt like a deer in headlights. I genuinely felt like I was being watched, like it was a strong vibe, but I still tried to ignore it. 12 AM hits and I don't realize this until the Christmas lights suddenly turn off, now I don't know if they make a noise like someone flipping a switch when they do this or not, I was asleep each time it's turned on and off before this moment, but that's exactly what it sounded like. I'm literally frozen in bed, NGL I'm tearing up a bit telling this story, and all I can think is that something went ahead and took the liberty to turn those MF lights off, and the switch for those being maybe 5 steps away from one of the windows in our room. Every now and then from 10pm-ish onwards, I've heard the occasional sheep, which is almost physically impossible given how far away they are, these noises sounded like they were coming from the cow paddocks, and the fact I'm hearing it now in the pitch darkness of my room, feeling like I'm being watched, and hearing the additional strange sound outside every now and then, like something on the veranda or something moving outside, I'm spiraling dude. So me being me, I decide F it, I am terrified of the dark, and I am hyper fixating on these noises and shit. Let's put the TV on, listen to some sleep music or something you know? Dumbass idea, I turn the TV on, it lights up, I go on YouTube and put on some bus and sleep music. I go from hearing like one sheep every now and then, to hearing several. Clear as MF day, these noises were definitely sheep, not to mention the strange noises outside were now becoming more frequent. Also, a cow starts screaming, now they've done this before, almost every night actually, usually it's like a build up, almost like a moaning scream that slowly gets louder, it's like repetitive, like oh 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 not just oh? I don't know bro, but last night, it went from hearing several sheep to hearing a cow suddenly start doing the screaming with absolutely no build up, there was genuine desperation or something in this noise, and it didn't last as long as they usually do, Usually it's like 10 seconds or something this was like 4 to 5 seconds. I start watching shit on my phone, ignoring any and every noise outside, trying not to break down from absolute fear, until I just about pass out. I wake up in the morning, not a single sheep noise, no loose sheep in the paddocks around the house, but I'm too scared to check the lights had been tampered with, and I'm too scared to see if there's a dead cow or some shit. I wanted to get any form of answers I can hear, keep in mind this shit has never happened before, we only ever hear cows and only cows. I know there's not much happening in this story but I've never had any type of experience like this, please read it, do your thing. I saw some videos about skinwalkers on TikTok. So I started watching videos about them on YouTube and there was a whole podcast where this guy just read stories about them from Reddit and other stories that people submitted. It was you, Horror Den. So I wanted to tell you my Wendigo experience. Well our ward at church purchased a piece of land way back in the day. It's seriously just wooded area with a little bit of swamp. Anyways, we would always go there for campouts and scouts and and at night when it was pitch black, we would all play manhunt. Well one time, we all got down to one person whose name was David. Growing up, he was super fast, and he would hide really good so nobody could ever find him. He would always end up being the last person. Well one time, it was down to David, and we had split up and gone way deep the forest toward the swamp because it seems like it was impossible to find him. We thought he might had gone a little bit further than we usually go. We started getting into some more muddy and wet terrain as we get closer to a swamp-like area where the water is probably shin deep, and we saw David way out in the swamp and he wasn't wearing any shirt, and with the spotlight on him, he looked super pale. But he just stood there and didn't say a word. 
You could seriously tell something was off. Then all of a sudden we heard David from behind us yelling trying to get our attention so we would keep trying to chase him down. Meaning, what we saw in front of us was definitely not him. So being a bunch of 12 to 17 year old boys, we started yelling and running back to the campsite as fast as we could. Nobody believed us. In fact, for years everybody made fun of it calling the ghost of David. But then I started listening to these stories, and every single one of them sounds just like what happened in some way or another. When I was about 10, my family wanted to drive cross country through the Southwest, visiting places throughout Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. We stopped for the night at a cheap cabin, I don't remember the exact location, but I remember it being somewhere between Alamogordo and Roswell. The area around it was very densely wooded, and it was about 20 minutes from a small gas station where we got food for the night. It was a two-bedroom cabin with a living room, and my parents took the big room, my younger sister got the other bedroom, and I was on the pull-out couch. The couch was placed directly next to a large window, looking out at a creek leading into the woods. Day went by, and everyone went to sleep. I woke up around 2 in the morning to a knocking on the window. I was facing away from it, and was too scared shitless to turn around. It wasn't a random knocking either. It was rhythmic, like a waltz with long pauses. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Too terrified to move, I lied there, trying not to make noise, until whatever was out there started to make a quiet, shrill, high-pitched whistle. When I heard that, I started screaming for my father, and the knocking abruptly stopped, and my dad ran into the room. He's not a superstitious man, and says to this day that he didn't see anything, but according to him, the sense of malaise that hit him was unlike anything he ever felt before. He got my sister, and we all slept together in the big bedroom. The next day, I looked at the ground outside the window, and saw large deer tracks leading directly up to it. We have did similar trips until I moved out, but my dad refused to go back to that area. I've heard this story from my parents years ago and I was since then not able to let it slide. Every now and then I have a wave of obsession over it and I want to do research. Sadly, the internet is littered with shit stories like the ones you can now see all over TikTok. I really want to do my research, but all I can find is history channel, cheap TikTok videos and stories about 12 feet tall wolves on their hind legs. So here I am, in this sub, hoping to find more genuine information on this topic. This is also the first time I ever post about this. Let me start this story off with my first big question mark. This all happened, not in Navajo areas, not in America, but in Czech Republic. Me and my family travel to Czech Republic regularly to visit relatives. They live in a very small village in the woods. Everyone knows everyone. It's beautiful and we always go for our long walks in the woods. So much that you could basically drop me off anywhere in the forest on my own and I would be able to find my way back without a problem. Our stay is always about two weeks long and we share a room with the four of us. There is not much to do there, but every day that we are there, we go for about two walks. Small ones, about half an hour to an hour depending on which side of the forest we enter. Then. When me and my younger brother go to bed, my parents go for one last walk with the dog and return about an hour later before going to bed. About eight or nine years ago I think, it was a normal summer day. I skipped the morning walk, had breakfast when everyone was walking and joined them on their walk before dinner. When it was time for me and my brother to go to bed, my parents and grandparents were in the living room. I was around 12 years old and at about that annoying age where you don't want to go to bed just yet. At 12 PM, when my grandparents get ready for bed, my parents check on us before going for their night walk with the dog. I pretended to sleep and when the door closed, I pulled out my iPod touch from under my pillow. My parents would always stay away for about an hour, 
so I knew how much time I had to play some games before they returned. After what I think was half an hour, I already heard my parents coming back. This was odd because they like to take their time to enjoy looking at the stars. They never get off the man-made path at night, because wild boars stay in the woods and they might still have some younglings, so they can be more dangerous if you enter their home. So from the path you can perfectly see the sky. What was even more odd, is that they were not just calmly entering the house, telling the dog good night and getting ready for bed. They slammed the door shut and quickly went into the bedroom. I, who couldn't help but be curious as to why they seemed to be panting and panicking, asked them why they were so early. Instead of getting an answer though, I was told to go to sleep because it was way too late. The next day they didn't mention anything to me about what happened. Not until I overheard them talking to my grandparents about a huge bird in the woods. I had to ask and they seemed hesitant, but finally they told me what had led them to finish the previous day with such stress. They were walking on their path with the dog, enjoying the warm night. Little before their usual stop where they would look at the stars the dog, who normally always runs ahead of them, seemed to not want to walk any further. Instead, he was looking up the hill into the woods. My parents, who didn't think much of it and brushed it off as a deer, went ahead and walked further. Until they heard a screech from where the dog was looking at. It was very far away, but they stopped walking to hear if they could hear it again. After a few seconds they did and the dog started barking. Not very long after it repeated itself, but it seemed to be a lot closer. The dog, who was normally very brave and protective started running back home and left my parents weirded out. One more time they heard the screech that my father described as the sound of a very huge owl and again it sounded like it was closer. That was the moment my parents started running home too. Very quickly it seemed to be catching up to them, but this is where it gets weird. Not only was the noise getting way too loud, it was also getting lower and the screechiness had turned into something more like a scream. Not only that, they started hearing the creature that was making the noise run. They said it sounded like a human running. Two heavy feet were following them, only at an immense speed. When they finally got out of the wooded area the running behind them stopped, but my parents kept running and the screaming of the creature continued. It sounded like a mix of a man and a bird and they kept hearing it for a while. They ran all the way home, knowing that they weren't being followed anymore, but they wanted to get home as soon as possible. My father is a brave man, and even though they never had this experience again, he still doesn't go to that part of the woods at night anymore. Hearing him tell me this story and seeing the fear in his eyes still haunts me. I believe in skinwalkers, but I don't know what to make out of this. Do skinwalkers exist outside of America? Can they make the sound of any animal? This will probably be a mystery for the rest of my life, but I still cannot let it go. My father and uncle have a story of living as outsiders, non-native, Caucasian, young people on the reservation. Their tale of experiencing a skinwalker. My grandma taught school on the reservation and they lived well off compared to the natives living there. From what I know, there's a lot of lore surrounding the Navajo Nation. Non-natives, primarily older generations, keeping their experiences and stories left unspoken, especially to those not from the culture. Forgive me if I'm mistaken in any of this, the culture, ideology, practices, or any other part. I'm just trying to tell the story my family has only spoken to me in whispers about. My grandmother, father, and uncle lived there for a few years and their experience was much different than the Navajo people who have lived there for generations upon generations. I just want to tell their story and get insight as to anyone else who has lived in that community and any other story some people might be willing to share. My father and uncle are about two years apart in age. They lived in Navajo Mountain in the 1980s. My dad was 10 to 12 and my uncle younger. As it goes, they were always outside riding bikes with their friends, natives of the reservation. My grandma was recovering from an abusive relationship with their father and wasn't too concerned with their whereabouts, being it was a small community. There wasn't much trouble around, 
nor would they know what real trouble was at that age. Trouble wasn't the issue to young white boys on a reservation then. Pure terror was. It was a typical night without any parental supervision. The night was colder than usual, and the night sky was blacker than you could imagine. In such a desolate place, the stars in the sky would light the night. This night was as if the earth had moved to a different dimension, an abyss. The boys raced each other as they did every night, until they were compelled to force their brakes in unison. They simultaneously looked up, each boy's face melted from carefree, innocent and adolescent to unadulterated horror. The boys stood motionless, grasping their bikes with every nerve, muscle and strength in their body on the dirt road. To the right of them was a mesa, one they rode by every day. The mesa that paralleled from my family's home. The mesa that they could see through my father and uncle's bedroom every night. This mesa would become fear and nightmares to them from this night forward. At the top of the mesa was a roaring fire. Taller than any bonfire that someone could assemble. Bigger than a group of people could assemble. It raged and was unbelievable, it was almost as tall as the mesa itself. More unbelievable was the pitch black figure seen cavorting around the bonfire. The native boys with my father and uncle informed them that this was not a typical Navajo dance or ritual. Pits began to form in their stomachs. Friends of my father and uncle turned back around without a word and bolted back to their homes. My father and uncle threw their bikes to the ground and ran across the unpaved road into their home. The two came back in a panic, relaying what they'd seen to my grandmother, but she was unconcerned. A legend of the natives she told them, and shooed them away. They laid awake all night in their shared room. Not saying a word to one another. They forced their curtains as close as possible, too scared to look out the window and see what they shouldn't have to begin with. Neither could shake the images burnt into their memory, but the sun managed to rise and peek through into their room. A sense of release washed over them as the darkness had faded. The boys left their beds and traveled to the kitchen to try a second time to tell my grandmother what they saw that night. They tried to get a handle on what they saw, but it was as if they couldn't explain it. Again, my grandmother brushed them off. With a coffee and newspaper more important than their story, she told them to climb the mesa and investigate. The boys wrangled the friends who shared the experience with the night prior as they passed on their bikes. The friends stayed on the dirt road, looking up at the mesa as my father and uncle climbed up to see any evidence of the hell-burning fire they witnessed together. The mesa wasn't much taller than an average one-story house. So the brothers took less than two minutes to climb to the top where the nightmare took place. When they got to the top they were hysterical and also relieved. There was no indication a bonfire of that enormity, or even a fire at all had taken place on the mesa they had clearly seen it the night earlier. They climbed down and told the message to the friends who had also been a part of the shocking scene. Their native friends looked at them in shock, but neither said a word to them. They immediately turned their bikes around and proceeded home. It was never talked about again despite my father and brother asking about it. My grandmother and everyone else in the community refused to talk about it again. My father is a skeptic. He does not believe in anything paranormal. Aliens, ghosts, mermaids, you name it. But whenever I ask about the skinwalker he saw, he turns pale and white. He gets quiet jumpy and curt. I had to plead to get the full story out of him and I could see goosebumps and every hair standing up on his arms when he shared his experience. My grandma took me to Navajo Mountain in 2019 to show me her history and to see how Navajo natives still live on this reservation today. According to her, not much has changed since living there in the 80s. I hiked and explored what I could of the reservation as to not invade or violate any of the Navajo reservation and its beauty. However, I did feel a change in mood when I visited. My existence felt heavy, as if I wasn't supposed to be there or if I was invading on territory that wasn't meant for me. Not caused by any of the community there, but just by my presence being on the land. I will never forget my experience visiting and all that I learned about reservation life. 
My intention is to hear any other stories from Navajo Mountain residents or talk with some people with similar stories in the Navajo reservation. I climbed the mesa where the skinwalker my dad and uncle claimed had its ritual. I felt pretty normal until I got to the top and stood in the middle. I felt some darkness creep into me as I stood there. I've never been the same since. So about a year ago I was helping a friend of mine move to New Mexico. She has three young kids so the plan was to take the last little load and her car late at night so the kids would sleep through the ride. At around 1.30 am after we have been in New Mexico for about an hour this strange animal just appeared beside us and was running at the same speed as the car, I flips out and asked how fast she was going, 75 miles per hour. It was right beside us, keeping up and looking directly at me. I can't even really explain what it looked like. Almost like jackalope but it was solid gray and had huge black eyes and was the size of a medium sized dog. After maybe 30 to 40 seconds of running beside us it just took a hard right into the wilderness and disappeared. An hour later we saw a giant meteor with a huge green slash white slash purple tail. Any thoughts? I was going with a friend up the canyon to test our super strong flashlight and see if we could light up a mountain, it was a snowy night and I was the passenger, we were driving for a while when I saw movement on the hillside next to the road so I looked up and I saw something that looked like a naked figure with long legs get up and start running, it was the fastest I ever saw a living thing move. It quickly ran into the darkness away from the headlights. I pointed and yelled to my friend and he only saw a glimpse, he couldn't tell what it was but he saw something and this confirmed to me I wasn't just seeing things, it just happened and scared me really bad and I was hoping I could get some input from this subreddit for what I may have saw, thanks. A few months ago, around 4 to 5 am I had woken up to what sounded like my cat being attacked and dragged away into the woods. I got up to open the door to my tiny house and looked outside and called my cat. He didn't come and I didn't see anything. My fiancé had gotten up and left for work at 3.45 am. Later that morning I saw my cat Vishnu playing with my other cat Mavis. A couple of nights go by and I'm woken up to the sound being right out my door and it fading into the woods this time I stayed in bed. I set up a deer cam to try and catch whatever it was making the sound but nothing was caught on the camera. Then. A few days later my fiancé is sitting on the porch relaxing at 11 pm and he looks over about 4 feet away he sees this pale creature on all fours. He went to grab his pistol to confront it, it took off. He said he got a glimpse of its face and the expression it had was like it was worried that it was seen. Ever since then we have not heard or seen anything. Late Fall 2010 in northern Canada I went deep into the wilderness with my father and my eldest brother to hunt for moose. We left in the early morning, just before sunrise trying to cover as much distance as possible before nightfall. We traveled winding rivers and had to repeatedly portage over rapids all day, we decided to set up camp just over halfway to our destination. My father figured that we'd make the rest of the journey tomorrow. Well. When everyone bedded down for the night I decided to go grab some firewood and relieve myself down by the bank of the river, just out of reach of the light from the campfire. Out from the tree line, about 15 yards away, I could hear rustling in the bushes, I watched the area where I heard the noise and focused on that spot. I felt kind of funny dizzy slash lightheaded and I could smell this putrid stink, like old milk or rotten food. Then I saw the trees start to morph and move ever so slightly and began to detect the shape of a head and slight facial features. My eyes began to adjust it to the darkness and along the tree line, I could hear this voice coming from there. I recognized it, the voice sounded like one of my relatives who had recently passed. The face took shape of my relative. Hello they said I've missed you, come see me I smiled and stepped forward Abbott but stopped to analyze the situation. My relative's face stopped smiling and became emotionless, 
The skin began to turn pale and peel away. Chunks of flesh from their cheeks began to fall away and I felt shock and fear overwhelm my body. I couldn't make sense of it at all so I started to back away and make my way to camp. I didn't realize at the time that I had been walking towards the voice and I was further away from the firelight. The voice became angry and began shouting at me to come here so I turned to run away but as I looked back one more time I saw the most disgusting thing I had ever seen. It was rotting flesh on gnawed bone, caved in eyes and a hollow chest cavity. This humanoid creature was tall and super thin. I ran as fast as I could, trying to yell for help but the fear had made my voice quiet and raspy. I ran along the river bank and I could hear the heavy breaths and the stomping feet from this thing right behind me. I made it onto the top of the river bank but it grabbed a hold of my leg as I jumped up. I gripped and tore the grass trying to lift myself and yelled as loud as I could then finally my voice came back and I yelled that someone has my leg. My brother woke up and ran over to where I was then he pulled me up and took me over to the fire. I was terrified trying to explain what I saw and that it looked like my relative but not. I was trying to convince them that I wasn't seeing things but my brother nodded his head and said I saw it too, I know. That solidified it, he acknowledged that it was real. We stayed up all night after that, rifles loaded and close by, we packed up when the sun was coming up and went back home. We haven't shared that story with anyone out of fear of being labeled as crazy or liars. I've had nightmares and couldn't sleep for months afterwards, I would see things slash dark figures looking into my window or hear whispers when I was walking home at night. Eventually I was seeing this dark figure daily, I went to medicine men slash shaman for help but I've learned that the ceremonies only relieves it temporarily. Friends have given me everything from protection pouches to certain crystals. I found out that there's a strong possibility that I encountered a Wendigo. I learned that if you encounter one and survive, it attaches itself to you like a parasite. I learned that it could only do this if it touches you, which it did. Ever since that night, I've been on edge when I enter any forest or wooded area, which sucks because I loved being outdoors, hunting and in nature. Now I always feel like I need to keep my back against something when I'm out in the wild. Anyways, make your own conclusions about this. I've paid a price for being an ignorant child to the stories of old. They are real, I can attest to that. Stay safe everyone. So today my friend, let's call her Ray, and I were in my car at night, windows rolled down and screaming our heads off to loud music. We were feeling absolutely happy laughing and having a great time overall while driving around the rich neighborhoods looking at huge mansions. Now, here comes what spooked us majorly. We start getting a little put off because of how dark this road was, plus we were going into the middle of a forested area and everything around us was getting darker and darker. I had to turn on the brights on my car. Now, we still didn't say anything to each other seriously, only joking about being a little nervous and getting weird vibes. I make the mistake of turning down a forked road, and immediately we feel sick to our stomachs, both at the same time. I just looked at her and we both started saying about how something is not right. It was such an urgent feeling of terror, dread, knowing something terrible was going to happen if we stopped the car. We felt like we had to roll the windows up because we wanted to be safer. Once we finally sped back around and started leaving I felt an intense feeling of something watching us, and I just could not make myself turn to look to my side into the forest or behind us. The second we got off that road it felt like a weight came off our shoulders, again at the same time. I've never felt this terrified before, with such a huge pit in my stomach and sense of dread. What was that? Seriously. I have no idea what happened or why we started feeling that way suddenly. I'm so scared even just thinking about it gives me goosebumps all over. Has anyone else experienced something like this, or do you know what it might have been? Edit, sorry for my lack of education on what Wendigos, or other creatures of that sort actually are. I heard from people around me that that's the feeling you get when they are around you, but I might be totally wrong. Something was definitely up though, whatever it was.
I've posted this in the Wendigo community I'm in, but I also wanted to share this here to see if anyone else has any intel that can help me since the other community seems to be pretty quiet. I realize how unbelievable this story might be, but I assure you it's entirely true. I've had countless experiences with the supernatural since I was four, I'm 33 now, but this is one of the most terrifying ones I've had. I've looked at some of the stories in this community to see if there's anything I haven't discovered yet. I thought that if I shared my encounter here, there might be someone who has some information that could help. Please don't comment if you don't believe in the supernatural. I've seen skeptics plastering their two cents on some posts. I'm looking for legitimate information. My questions are at the end of this. Thanks in advance. I had an experience with a Wendigo this fall in early October in northern Minnesota in a state forest, very close to, if not on, a reservation. I've always heard that speaking of them can draw them to you. But I hadn't thought of or listened to any Wendigo stories any time close to my encounter. I was staying with some very dear friends, I'll call them M and C, and they have a camper in their yard by the lake for guests to sleep in. I had walked down to the camper from the house with my miniature dachshund, Ebony, around midnight and found that I needed to set some things up, primarily the heater. By the time I was done getting everything in order, it was approximately 1.30. I never thought to lock the door because, really, I figured it's in the middle of the woods so there was nothing to worry about. I was wrong. I had closed the curtains, thank God and I was having trouble falling asleep because my anxiety was going mad, M and C's dogs were barking outside, and their geese wouldn't stop honking. Ebony, who usually sleeps under the covers, was sitting on my hip while I laid on my side, and I could feel her turning her head back and forth, like she was trying to track something outside. I tried tucking her under the blankets to calm her down, but she kept returning to her perch on my hip. I have no idea how long I laid there. I would say at least 40 minutes, when all of a sudden I heard M's voice outside the camper, anybody in there? Hmm. And what sounded like claws dragged down the side of the camper. I almost called back to her, when I realized one. She and C were both fast asleep by now, and two. M knew I was in there. She wouldn't ask if anybody was. Suddenly. I noticed everything had gone absolutely silent outside. The dogs and the birds had stopped carrying on. The gusts of wind had even stopped. It was the kind of silence you hear about in horror stories, how the woods go mute when something evil is in the area. Then another thought hit me, Ebony would be losing her SHT and barking at the door if that had been anything human. She was frozen on my hip, dead quiet, shaking. I didn't dare to move but I was really starting to have to pee. And I remembered that I hadn't locked the door. I have no idea how long I laid there debating whether I should get up and use the bathroom and lock the door, but it felt like an eternity. In reality, I guessed it was maybe 10 to 15 minutes. I thought it may have been a skinwalker at first, but remembered they don't mimic the voices of your loved ones to lure you into the woods. Wendigo egg do. I knew these creatures, demons, whatever they are, can lure humans out of their abodes if they make eye contact with you, and everything in me was screaming to make sure I didn't look outside. I made doubly sure I didn't look through any cracks in the curtains as I walked softly to the front of the camper, and very slowly turned the lock, praying and holding my breath. I made sure to keep my eyes away from the windows as I crawled back in bed, and pulled Ebony close and she finally stayed under the blankets. I snuck a peek at my phone for the time before I laid down, figuring it had to be close to 3 a.m., the witching hour, it was about 2.30. As soon as I laid down, the wind kicked back up and M and C's basset hounds erupted into howls as they came running down to the camper and a little ways into the trees, and the geese started their noise again. I heard the bassets come back to the camper, barking a few more times before they laid down outside the door to protect me. I didn't get out of bed again that night. I told M and see what had happened the next morning. I think I was hoping M would say she had come down to check on me and Ebony, but she confirmed what I already knew, they had gone to bed as soon as I had left the house. I said a prayer over their house, the camper, 
and all of us the following night and had an uneventful night, thank God. I also spoke with another guy who's familiar with the supernatural to see if he knew any more about Wendigo Ag. I'm not sure how accurate the information he gave me was, or if it's reliable at all, but when I asked him why Ebony hadn't made a peep, I had assumed it was because she was absolutely petrified, he said a Wendigo can control animals to keep them from alerting their owners about its presence. He also told me one. They can't enter houses that aren't made of wood directly from the forest they're hunting in, tents and campers included because they consist of man-made materials, too. A lock is useless, they can unlock and open a door so they can try to lure you outside, and three. They typically stay in the woods, but they will come into a smaller town, and never into a city. I had never heard of any of what he told me before, so again, I can't speak for accuracy, but I also haven't researched the claims either. He also advised me never to go outside to pee at night if I ever go camping and to bring a bucket or something to use and to make sure that I always close tent flaps and curtains before falling asleep. He said if the flaps are open so you can see outside, the Wendigo can make eye contact with you and draw you out. After leaving M and C's to go to my father's house for a few days, I had the distinct feeling of being watched when I took Ebony outside after dark. My father lives three hours away from M and C, but his house is in the country. I told myself it was only the fear from the experience and what I know about the Wendigo triggering an overactive imagination. I never heard anything, and I watched Ebony's behavior very closely and she didn't act like she had in the camper. I'm moving back to that area from Canada, and this experience has been weighing heavily on my mind. I've been trying to find any information about warding them off, or if they have a home hunting range like cougars do or if they move on from a region. My prayers did work the second night, so I figure I can pray over the property. I also have holy water that I can use, since the Wendigo is an evil spirit that possesses people or physically manifests. Frustratingly, a majority of what comes up in searches is utter garbage like Wikipedia. Does anyone know if a Wendigo stays in one area? Are my concerns about it coming back when I get moved into my cabin warranted, or am I worrying excessively? Do you have any tips for warding them off? Thanks again for any information you can offer. My niece had a very eerie and sort of similar situation last night. She's renting a house from me in South Central Wisconsin. It's a little less than a half mile from town, houses are probably a block and a half apart, it's basically the country. She got home from her kid's choir concert and was putting her youngest in his high chair when she heard her dog outside whining to get in. Then she heard her husband's voice teasing the dog. And she paused, cause her husband is supposed to be two hours away for work. She was just thinking in her head, oh my god he got done early and is here to surprise us. And suddenly her oldest son, nine years old, goes, oh, Dotto is home. So she walks to the kitchen window, looks out, her husband's truck isn't there. She goes back to the door, and suddenly the dog is whimpering and crying and heavily scratching at the door to get in. Let me just say, if an actual human was outside, this dog would be going crazy with excitement. She loves to greet people. But she literally was full of desperation to get inside. So my niece lets her in, and a voice in her mind was like lock the door. So she immediately locked it and turned to her oldest son and said, Han, why did you say Dotto was home? And he said, I heard him outside teasing the dog. He heard IT too. Then she thought maybe she butt dialed her husband and maybe he was hollering through the phone to get her attention and that's what she heard. So she checked. No, she hadn't. She found out he was still at work and was nowhere near the house when this happened. I've heard W's are most active during the winter months and we have had some pretty rough weather this week. We had a winter squall last week, an ice and snow storm this week. And yesterday we got several inches of snow again. My biggest concerns are keeping her and her family safe. This didn't happen on tribal land, so I don't know what their policy is as far as offering help in this type of situation. 
At first she was concerned it was a Wendigo. But it doesn't really fit the description, from my very limited understanding, since it imitated her husband and not an animal. I'm very curious about what is best to put out for an offering and if smudging outside helps at all. We're concerned about smudging inside because we can feel the energy of my grandparents who used to live in the house still there, and she believes my father who recently passed has visited them as well. So we don't want to push out the good energy if we don't have to, any help is very appreciated. This was the best thread I could find that wasn't all just a big debate on whether or not W's exist. Thank you in advance. I also want to add, later on in the night her dog was still refusing to go outside to the bathroom. It did eventually go out, but at one point her dog was pacing and her cat started crying loudly. She got scared and started praying for positive energy and protection and they both started to calm after that. That's when her dog finally went out to go to the bathroom. A large concern is she and her son heard whatever this was. Clearly in her husband's voice. But they didn't see anything, thankfully. This happened when I was 7 years old. I'm sharing this because my older brother reminded me of it, now that I'm 24, and now I can't get it out of my head. This was very traumatic for me because after this event, a bunch of other things started to happen. This is how it started. Growing up and now, I live in a haunted state, and I lived 5 miles away from the most victorious haunted forest. My mom used to tell my brothers and I about what she would hear walking by the forest, the murders that happen, and about how she used to see Pukwudgies. My older brother, 11 at the time, let's call him, and I, 7 female, were watching TV in the living room. It was dark outside, must have been a new moon. If you were sitting on the couch and looked to your right, you would see the glass sliding door, which viewed the backyard. Mind you, it was an acre lawn and tall trees lined the perimeter. I was tired and decided to get my ritual glass of milk before bed, when I stood up and saw what was glaring at me through the glass door. It was tall, taller than the F door. It was skinny in the torso but its chest was broad. It was white, with tall ears. I want to say it looked like the white version of Donnie Darko. I was about 15 feet from the glass door. I froze. It didn't move. It just kept looking at me. It could not have been anyone else because we lived in the middle of the woods. I start calling for my brother's name, but D wasn't answering me. I started to get louder, now calling for my mom. Her room was on the other side of the couch so she was there in a heartbeat. She looked at the back door, looked at Dee, then told me to just sit back down. I couldn't understand why I was the only one freaking the F out. I laid on the couch facing away from the glass door. Dee puts a blanket on me and we both fell asleep on the couch. Well. 2021, Dee calls me from jail, he's been in and out since I was 13, this is how the conversation went. Dee, hey. Can I ask you something? Me, what's up? D, do you remember that night? Me, what night? D, that night where you were freaking out, we were young. Remember that tall scary looking shit that was at the back door? Me, I had a flashback of that night. D, look, I had a dream about it last night, and I wanted to tell you that I saw it too, I was too scared to do anything. Mom saw it also. The convo ended because he only had so much time on the phone. I felt relief, that I knew I wasn't just having a schizophrenic hallucination episode, but my body went numb from the memory of being so scared. I told my soulmate about it, he's my best friend. My friend told me that I came face to face with a Wendigo, and how he wasn't be surprised because of the small country town I lived in. When I looked up what a Wendigo was, my heart sank. That's what I saw. Now I think about it every day. It's been a year since I was reminded of it. I believe it still follows me. This is kind of a long story, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. I just recently moved to Oklahoma. Recently, 
I keep having very uncomfortable experiences outside, especially in the evening or night time. It started when I went to go put laundry in the wash one day. We have a laundry room attached to our building, and it was broad daylight, so I wasn't exactly feeling nervous about anything. I got about 20 feet from the walkway slash alleyway to the washroom and I smelled the worst rotting animal smell I've ever smelled in my life. Not only that, as soon as I smelled it, I got the strongest flight or fight reaction I've ever felt. I ran back to my unit, locked the door, and had a small anxiety attack. I waited about 15 to 20 minutes before going back out, and when I did, there was no smell. And I felt normal. Fast forward about a week later. My husband and I were outside at about 1 am smoking a cigarette when we heard what sounded like a dying dog. We live right off of a major interstate, so we assumed an animal must have been hit. We started walking towards the direction of this noise, sort of a wheezing whine, a terribly sad noise, when we got to the edge of our parking lot. As we got onto the pavement, the wheezing dog noise turned into what sounded like an owl hooting. I understand owls make strange noises, I was raised in Texas, I've heard many, but this was not an owl. The longer we listened to it, the more it sounded like a person trying to mimic an owl. My husband called out hey, is someone there? Pretty loudly, and just silence was the response. We stood quiet a few moments before the owl noise completely stopped, and the sound of an unnatural laugh echoed from the trees. The only way I can describe this noise, is it was like when a deaf person laughs, like they can't hear how they sound so it just kinda sounds a bit off? I don't mean to sound rude at all, truly, that's just the only way I know how to describe it. It felt like ice water was in my veins as soon as I heard it, both of us just felt extreme fear in that moment and ran back to the house. I could explain off all of these things if I hadn't seen what I had seen next. A few days later, I was outside smoking around 7 pm, and I saw two men walking on the side of the street where I had heard the noise a few nights prior. They walked past the trees a little ways but then stopped, it was dusk so light was low, one of them turned on their phone light and shined it into the trees before jumping back, both men took off at a full sprint away from the tree line. I have no idea what they saw, I didn't hear anything, but there was pure fear there. The most frustrating part was I was looking right at them and saw absolutely nothing. Fast forward about a week later. I get a text while I'm at work from my husband telling me he heard our daughter talking and laughing in the field across the street. He was 100% sure it was her until he realized she was inside in her room. He said it sounded just like her. Fast forward again a few days later. I found dried blood on my door jam as well as scratches near my door knob, and more dried blood at the bottom of my door. My neighbor had their internet cables cut and told me that someone had tried to open their door the night it happened, and then slammed their body against the door trying to break in. My neighbor said he forced himself out the door ready to confront whoever was there, but there was no one? We constantly hear things on the roof, things in the alley behind our place, our dog will run to the door at random hours and sniff and growl like someone is there. I have probably made a mistake by calling out to this thing, whistling at night, trying to antagonize it because I desperately want a recording. I have one recording of its noises, it sounds like an owl, but towards the end there's this low inexplicable moan that comes from the same place the owl sounds are coming from. It's hard to hear and ends very abruptly. I don't feel like this is good enough. No one believes me, but something is out there. It knows I know it, I feel it watching me, if I curse at it or try and lure it out, it goes completely silent or does that horrible laugh. I can never seem to catch the laugh, or any of the noises, as soon as I hit record, it usually stops. I don't know how to explain this, but I know I'm not crazy. Please, if someone can help me, I really want to know what this thing is. I have pictures of the blood on my door, the scratches, and the video of the owl sound slash moan. I just feel like no one will take this seriously. It always smells like a corpse when it's around, that's the biggest sign something isn't right. I brought it up to one of my native co-workers and he said leave it be. Wash the blood from your door, 
and stop trying to talk to it. He wouldn't tell me anything else. I don't know if this is a Wendigo, a skinwalker or something else entirely, but I have never felt such dread and fear as I do when I hear or smell it out there. Please, someone, anyone, if you know what this is, please tell me I'm not losing my mind, and if it's real, how do I make it go away? This thing is causing me so much stress, thank you for reading. Edit, thank you to everyone who took the time to share advice and thoughts on this. To those who are concerned about me putting myself in danger, thank you, and I'm inclined to agree with you all, but understand I'm still not sure if this is just a weird animal I'm hearing and nothing paranormal at all. I will be avoiding it from this point forward, just in case it is something that wants to eat my face. I will however update this post if anything else worth mentioning happens. Thanks again. I was in the US Coast Guard many years ago, running drug patrols along the Columbia Bar in Astoria, Oregon. We were underway one time during extremely bad weather, rain, thunder, high seas, choppy waves, high velocity winds, poor visibility. I was at the helm during one of my first steering watches, driving the boat they called it, and it was pretty crazy. During weather like that, if you don't know, the bow of the ship rises and lowers as you crest each wave, and the bigger the wave the bigger the up and down movement. I can't remember what that movement is called, anyone? Anyway, I was at the helm, doing my thing, the duty officer was on watch with me. As the ship's bow went up, we were literally looking at the sky, there was a flash of lightning and I saw what looked like a pterodactyl trying to roost on the highest mast. Big wings, weird shaped head, flapping as it tried to gain purchase. Of course it was probably a big seabird of some kind, but I clearly remember my brain at the time screaming pterodactyl at me. And of course, like all good monster sightings, the thing was gone when I finally convinced the duty officer to check it out. So, you know, sailors have always seen weird shit. I have a story of a creature on my hunting land from when I was a kid. When I was about 10 years old I was hunting with my grandfather, now deceased, on family-owned land near Covington, Minnesota. It was near dusk and we'd been sitting for a couple hours. Now we haven't seen much just a spiker and a small doe nothing large enough to shoot. We were starting to lose hope and were getting ready to start the about one mile trek back to our cabin. As we were preparing to leave we heard some twigs cracking from our right rear side. The stand we were in was tucked in the rear corner of a large clearing on one of the bigger trees in the tree line. As the cracks from the twigs got closer I remember realizing that all other ambient noises stopped. When the creature finally emerged from the tree line I remember my heart feeling like it stopped working and an overwhelming feeling of dread wash over me. What I saw was what looked to be a small buck that looked like it hadn't eaten in weeks, and was an extremely pale brown almost gray with what looked to be a broken neck and a missing antler stumble into the clearing. At this time the sun was just about to sink below the tree tops and cover the clearing with shadows. I recall looking over at my grandfather and seeing a level of fear I have never seen on his face before. Mind you my grandfather was tough and fearless as they come being. He'd seen active duty in Vietnam as infantry. After seeing my grandfather's face it just made the feeling in my stomach become worse. As we watched this deer stumble into the clearing, my grandfather reached for his binoculars. As he pulled them out, the lens cover made a small noise on the side of the stand. The creature must have heard it because it stopped its stumble, now in the middle of the clearing, and creepily rotated around and rose up on its hind legs and stared directly at us, for about a minute before running off in an creepily awkward sprint into the woods. At this time it felt like I just had gotten the wind knocked out of me and I was petrified with fear. After the encounter me and my grandfather sat in the stand completely silent staring at the clearing trying to make sense of what we just witnessed. As we started to walk back we heard extremely weird almost human sounding noises coming from the woods around us. By the time we got back to the cabin my grandfather decided it'd be best to call our trip early and head back home. 
But before we left I had to use the bathroom and our cabin was quite old so I didn't have indoor plumbing just an old outhouse. As I sat down to use the toilet, the immense feeling of dread returned as I heard human-like whispers and small scratches on the back of the outhouse. I screamed at the top of my lungs to my grandfather as I ran out of the outhouse crying. After that we drove back home and had a small discussion on what we saw. Despite being an avid hunter, that was my grandfather's last season of hunting and about a year later we sold the land. I've told this story a couple times to close friends and family but I think most of them think I'm crazy especially being the only witness now that my grandfather passed away. Still to this day the encounter sends shivers down my spine every time I think about it. This happened a couple months ago and I didn't think anything strange of it at the time but after talking to multiple people including my father. I'm not very confident in what I saw anymore and I'm looking for some help. So I work third shift at UPS, Richwood, Kentucky. I was driving a buddy of mine home a couple miles out, and had just started driving home. I was in the Beech Grove area near some apartment buildings on a back road, when about 30 to 40 feet in front of my car I watched a creature dash across the road. I stopped my car to look at it, it stopped in someone's yard, turned back at me and made eye contact with me for about 10 seconds. I went to take a picture and it ran. At first I thought it was the first fox I had ever seen, but after some research online it looks nothing like foxes native to Kentucky. This fox was about three and a half feet tall, very slender with long skinny legs. It didn't look malnourished though, it looked very healthy. Solid black eyes with pointy diagonal ears that were tipped black, with the lower half of its legs being black, and the tip of its tail being black. It was about 4 a.m. and perch black outside, but there were plenty of porch and street lights for me to see it. It was also decently foggy that night. The only species of fox I found online that looks like it is one that's native to Africa, and extinct. Since this encounter almost two years ago, I've seen three other wild foxes in the area. Two were as described by Google, much smaller than the one I saw. The third one I saw was about 5 minutes out from my house and it looked just like the massive fox but slightly shorter. A friend of mine brought up the idea of it being a skinwalker, so I thought I'd post this here to get thoughts from anyone that would have any kind of idea for me, since I've heard stories of skinwalkers being in Kentucky. We live in Utah and my uncle, Mark, went on a mission at 19. They sent him to an Indian reservation in Arizona. They paired him up with a companion named Carl. When they first got there, there was a huge rift with the locals on the reservation with them being there. They didn't want my uncle and Carl staying on the reservation grounds. Eventually they came to a compromise that they would stay on the outskirts in a trailer. This reservation wasn't very big and was located next to a heavily wooded area. The first night, they were trying to sleep when all of the sudden their trailer started to shake violently back and forth. Startled and not sure what was happening, they climbed under their table for cover. Mark could distinctively hear someone pushing it from both sides of the trailer, like a group of people. After about five minutes, it stopped. That next day, they made rounds on the reservation and were talking to the locals. Carl made a comment to one of the families that their trailer was shaking that night before. The family got very quiet and then told them they had to leave. They thought it was strange, but didn't think much of it. The next night it happened again. They awoke to their trailer shaking back and forth. Again they climbed under the table until it stopped. This went on for two more nights. Anytime they tried to talk to anyone about it, they got quiet and told them to leave. Mark started thinking that, due to the tension of their arrival, the locals were doing this to scare them off the reservation. They then go into a convenience store and they were talking together about how frustrated they were with the situation. The clerk overheard and said, they can't talk about it. It's forbidden. Confused, they ask him, can't talk about what? The guy continues to tell them about the skinwalkers. 
He says they are evil demons that were once Native American witches. If they talk about it, the skinwalkers will come for their souls. They just walked out of their baffled. They thought it was another scare tactic. So that night, when the shaking started again, my uncle decided to be brave and confront them. He went to the trailer door, flew it open, and yelled hey. When he did that, he saw these three animals run off. Two were a wolf, one was a bear. But they looked strange. Almost with human features. As he watched them run towards the trees, all three stood up on two legs, and walked slowly towards the trees making a human cackling laugh. It scared him so bad that they called their mission president that next morning and asked to be moved. They were relocated that day. For a year nothing happened. One day, they announced that Carl was being relocated to another city and Mark was getting a new companion, Jimmy. They had to drive for about an hour to pick Jimmy up from the airport. The road they traveled went through the boundaries of the reservation. They arrived at about 8 p.m. and met Jimmy, and they go to leave. The mission president tells Jimmy, we are driving through a dangerous area at night, so we can't make any stops. If you need to use the restroom, you need to go now. Jimmy says, I am fine. The mission president gets serious enough to even freak out Mark, I am not kidding, go to your business. Jimmy was insistent he was fine. So they hit the road. As they were about 30 minutes into the drive, they were going through the area of the reservation boundaries, Jimmy starts complaining that he needed to pee badly. The mission president says, we can't stop here. You'll have to hold it. Jimmy keeps going on, I really can't hold it. So the mission president stops the car and says, okay, but you will do your business next to the door, and if I say get into the car, you better get into the car fast. With a look of confusion, Jimmy says, all right opens the door, and starts to do his business. About five seconds later the mission president says nothing and just yanks Jimmy into the car and floors it. Jimmy and Mark start freaking out, what is going on? The mission president says nothing and just increases his speed. All of a sudden, Mark sees something next to the car to his right. A giant wolf-looking man was running on two feet next to the car. Mark looked at the speedometer, they were going over 60 miles an hour and still increasing. The wolf creature kept right next to the car for 10 minutes until it finally took off into the trees. Shaking, Jimmy gets out of the car when they arrive, they didn't speak through the whole ordeal, and says, what did I just see? The mission president says, next time I tell you to take care of your business, you take care of your business. We was walking through the woods in Tuskegee, Alabama in the Tuskegee National Forest going duck hunting. While we were walking we stopped for a quick minute to rest and I looked up and seen something flash before my eyes, as we got to our destination at the swamp. We looked to our left and saw something walking across the beaver dam. We do not believe it acknowledged our presence. We would describe it as a tall, wide, black from head to toe creature walking upright on two legs trying to quickly get into the woods. Also looked like as if he were carrying a large object in one hand. It was time to go after that. The hunt was over. One particular instance stands out as the most unnerving thing I've experienced. It's one thing to see a sign warning about a predator in the area. It's another thing to be stalked by it all day. I went out one afternoon on my small John boat to do some fishing in the swamp, mainly for warmth. I was pretty familiar with the area, and motored out three to four miles to reach my favorite spot. Alligators are fairly commonplace out there, and it's just something you become accustomed to. Generally, if you respect them, they'll respect you, as they've become pretty used to fishermen. The water in the swamps are full of tannic acid from the decaying leaves on the bottom, so the water looks inky black at first, and visibility is only a few inches. Anything that is visible just under the surface is tinted a dark amber color. I had caught a few fish, and noticed that around 50 to 60 yards back up the canal, 
A pair of eyes floating just above the water was pointed my direction. It was a gator, no big deal. They've learned to be opportunistic and steal stringers of fish if you leave them hanging over the side of the boat. I continued fishing for a few minutes, and had just reached down over the side of the boat to grab the lip of a warmoth I'd hooked. As I pulled the fish out, I saw the faintest glint of amber in the water, about a foot below where my hand had just been. I watched as the faint glint slowly rose up towards the surface of the water, revealing two black eyes and the largest jaw on any gator I've ever seen in the wild. I slid back to the center of my small john boat as the head of the gator broke the surface. I could feel its back sliding along the bottom of my boat, shifting it slightly. After watching it for 10 to 15 seconds, it finally swam out from under the boat. I'm guessing it was pushing 12 to 13 feet, and that's after having seen hundreds of gators. This gator followed me the rest of the day. I'd motor ahead a ways, just to put some distance between us and not long after I'd stop, I'd feel that familiar bump on the bottom of the boat again. Each time, it would eventually just swim off a few feet to turn and stare at me. I've never felt more outmatched. This dark, quiet, toothy bastard had the ability to sneak up on you any time it pleases and get within three feet of you before you ever know it's there. Do you know how unnerving it is to look something in the eye at that makes it abundantly clear that it's only waiting for you to make a mistake? There's a level of intelligence and focus in those eyes that makes you understand your place in the food chain. It's not the first time gators have followed me, I've been followed by three at one time before. But none have ever made me so intimately aware that the only thing on its mind was to drag me out of my boat and under the surface of that black water. I had just gotten up from sleeping and was putting on clothes for the AM. Fishing with my friend. I was standing and looking out the upper bedroom window and saw a large grayish, brown hairy figure trotting through the edge of the woods towards the log cabin and turned to trot across the earth dam. I immediately went downstairs and asked my friend if he was attempting to play a joke but he was already down at the boat in another direction. The figure had been jogging or trotting at a moderate pace with a hunched over stance and I witnessed it for 6 to 10 seconds before it disappeared across the lake. I am a Marine Corps veteran from Vietnam and I have better than 20-20 vision I have been on many fishing trips in the area for about 10 years. When the figure was moving through the tree area it looked as though it was brushing some of the limbs with its body. I was driving back home from my friend's place in rural western MA around 1-2 am I was driving through this area that's about 3 quarters of a mile long that's just a long canopy of dense trees. Dark even in the day but at night, it's pitch black. You can barely see 20 feet in front of you even with high beams on. Anyway, driving, about 6 feet away from the side of the road 100 feet ahead of me I see something that looks wrong in a way I can't explain. You know when something doesn't make sense to you or you know something isn't right. Like the parasympathetic feeling we get when we see someone break their ankle, we know it isn't supposed to bend that way so it gives us the heebie-jeebies. It was like that, but I wasn't sure why until I was 30 feet away from it. It was this coyote standing on its hind legs and was way too tall to be an actual coyote standing upright. Coyotes are the size of a very small lab, like 50 pounds on a good day if that, this thing was at least 6 feet standing. It made me feel nauseous just looking at it. It was too tall and its face was wrong. It looked humanoid, the same way we recognize human faces as being human. I had that feeling like I was looking at a person but it wasn't totally human. It reminded me of cat eye syndrome but at least that is explainable. This wasn't. Anyway, I spent way too long being as close as I was to that thing as it stared at me, but I gunned it out of there and locked the hell out of my house when I got home despite being around 20 miles away from where I saw it. I don't know what it was, but it freaked the F out of me. I was staying at the Marriott Hotel 6th floor in Huntsville, Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center. 
At 5.40 a.m. on February 24, 2009 I went on the balcony to drink my coffee as the room was too stuffy and hot. I was out there just thinking and staring off at the woods when something caught my eye, after refocusing on it I realized there were legs, then arms, then I could clearly make out his face. The creature stood 6 to 7 feet tall and was staring directly back at me it seemed to have fine hairs all over grey color hair that got more black as the hair got closer to the skin the tips of the hair were much lighter the face, lips, eyelids, etc. were more of a very dark brown it stood very erect, was very muscular, and did not seem to have the ape-like protruding mouth and nose but more flat-faced human-like, after 30 seconds he started rocking back and forth. I then realized this was moving and could in no way be mistaken for a deer or bear or anything else. This was a fully erect ape-like animal that seemed to want me see him. He was rocking back and forth from side to side. After the initial 30 seconds he rocked for about 10 to 12 seconds then stood and stared at me. I was on the 6th floor about 120 yards away in decent lighting due to hotel lights and street light behind loading area of hotel he then would stare back then he would remain face forward with feet only about 2 feet apart would lean over to his left with his right arm would start pulling bark off a very large pine tree. It looked as if someone were in a sawing position then he would stand up stare at me then rock and then pull bark. This was done in that order three times over a five to six minute period. After five minutes of re-verifying what I was looking at I felt this creature was docile and smooth moving. I decided I would try and get a closer look. As I opened the sliding glass door he stared and I stared back. I ran out of the hotel room and there was security in our hall laying the morning news at the hotel room doors. I asked him to come with me and asked for backup since he had no gun. We ran around the corner outside, as we were running I finally got the nerves to tell them what I saw. We get to the reference points I had chosen and there were a lot of fresh bark removed from the large pine tree. I tried to pull bark from it to no avail. It was too hard I am 6 feet 4, 300 pounds I went back after 7 am, light. I did notice what looked like scat. It took the form of explosive diarrhea and looked like a hundred birds had pooped in a small area. Like in a shotgun pattern heavy in the middle and lighter to the outside perimeter. I put a large handful in a Marriott laundry plastic bag. It looks like feces and digested berries and seeds. It was dry although it had rained the night before, one of the Marriott employees saw two large footprints, more like deep indentions in the pine straw. I took off my shoe and placed my foot in it and there was about a 1 inch area all the way around my foot in order to fill the indention. Something very heavy had to make these indentions. I tried and I am 300 pounds and could not. I am 100% positive of the above description. I watched this clearly for 5 to 6 minutes. I was out at my grandparents' house, hunting coyotes, as usual, this time of year. I was hiking through my next door neighbor's land, to get to the wood covered land in the back. While I was hiking, I got the feeling I was being followed by something to my right. I stopped and switched the red tin on my headlamp to my spotlight but didn't see anything. Then I switched back to my headlamp and pulled my rifle back up and continued my hike. It was 6.15 am and the sun was just coming up. I was sitting in a hide I'd made the day before. That's when I saw something behind a group of trees on my left. It was crouched. I raised my rifle, looked through my scope and froze when I saw the creature staring back at me. I panicked and fired a shot off. That's when it stood up and took off, deeper into the woods. I sat there probably another 25 minutes before I decided it was safe to head in and did so. Later that day, I grabbed my grandfather and we both went out to where I had seen the creature when it stood up on two legs and took off. We measured where I had seen it and it was roughly seven and a half feet tall. To this day, I'm terrified to go out at night or in the early morning hours. I wanted to share a story of an encounter me and a bunch of friends had back in 1968. To this day I still think about it, 
Kind of hard to forget no matter how hard I've tried. Anything I say today must be understood as the words of someone only 11 years old. But I'll try to make myself as clear as I can. On a summer evening in 1968, an older cousin, a group of friends and I decided to play baseball at a nearby baseball field. The field was about four to five blocks away from where I lived at 3621 Richmond Avenue and the field was southeast from my house. Anyway, we all got together and were playing. There wasn't enough of us to play team to team match up, so we were rotating one pitcher, one fielder, and the catcher, while the rest batted. There are some train tracks that ran parallel to the baseball field, I mention this because of what happened next. My time came up to pitch and my older cousin was fielding. One buddy hit a foul ball and it went over the fence towards the railroad tracks. By then it was getting a little past dusk, though, the field lights weren't too bad. There was a man standing close to where the ball rolled to a stop. My cousin ran towards the fence and yelled at the man to throw the ball back to us. He ignored my cousin so I ran over and yelled as well. The rest of the guys came over and we started to cuss the guy out for ignoring us. None of us wanted to get near the guy though. Something about him didn't feel right. One of the guys picked a rock and threw it at what we thought was a bum. The rock came close but didn't hit the guy. Then a group of guys started to throw rocks, that's when the crap hit the fan. This guy? Turned towards us slowly and dropped to all fours. What we all saw next, by the dim field lights, was not a man but a snarling wolf-like creature. My cousin was the first to react by yelling werewolf. And he turned and ran followed by the rest of us. We ran as a group. Some were lucky and made it home first. Peeling off from the rest of us one by one. My cousin and a friend ran to my house and spent the night. We told my parents what we had seen and of course, they blew us off. My mom told us what you probably saw was the devil himself for staying out past dusk. Being Hispanic we always had holy water around the house. We blessed the house and especially my bedroom. None of us slept that night and any noise would make us jump. The next morning, we, all the guys, screwed up enough courage to go back to investigate. We found our ball where it had landed but no visible tracks of anything else. Everyone but me agreed that we had seen a werewolf. I kept asking how could it have been a werewolf if there was no full moon last night? Have dog men sightings been reported near El Paso? And no, I don't want to be on your show or be identified. The very few people I've told over the years have either laughed at me or thought I was crazy. I'm an old man now but I needed to get this off my chest. When I was about 8 or 10 years old, I saw a Bigfoot. It was on Green Mountain near Huntsville, Alabama. It was unpopulated then. Now there are million dollar homes there. I was on my way home from my uncle's house on a gravel road. I was on one side of a hill. The road went down this hollow and back up the other side. In the ditch line was Bigfoot, about 8 feet tall with arms that looked like they reached down past his knees. It was slightly leaned forward looking straight at me. It scared the daylights out of me. So I went back to my uncle's house and told him. He got his shotgun and we went back. It was still there looking at us. Uncle threw up the gun to shoot and I told him we needed to get closer. So we went down the hill and as we did we lost sight. When we got back up the other side it was gone. I was driving on an unpaved backcountry road at about 50 miles per hour. Suddenly there was something in front of my driver's side headlight. I didn't see it until it was there. I didn't see it running across the road. It was like it just showed up, poof. It was traveling to the left. I caught that glimpse of it and then it was gone. I had hit the brakes when I saw it, so I was then going around 20 miles per hour and looked in the direction it went and saw nothing. It was flat, saltgrass prairie with no trees so I should have been able to see it. At the time with the knowledge I had, the only name I had for it was werewolf. Now I would call it dog man. It was a bipedal, black wolf. 
Its legs were really skinny, backwards looking, and it was hunched over so that the arms hung low. It was at least five feet tall bent over like it was. If it was standing, I would guess it would gain at least a foot and a half. It had a thick torso, but not too thick, with long hair like a small cape across the shoulders and upper back down to the end of shoulder blades. The rest of its body was covered with short hair, or almost hairless. It had a shaggy tail. I was walking home from fishing, taking a different trail. As I got about two-thirds roads. Up the hill I had the hair on my neck stand up and a feeling like I was being watched. This was around 5 p.m. I just casually kept walking till I got home always checking my back. It happened again within a week. Maybe a few days. Did not smell anything cause I had been fishing or no smell anyway. Wasn't long afterwards I was checking on the clouds of a thunderstorm when lightning struck close to the trailer. By this I mean I had my head out the door. I heard a yell about 70 yards. Behind the trailer. It didn't sound like a cow but I checked anyway. No cows had been in the area for at least 6 months. The scream was high pitched without coming down a lot at the end. With my wife being there, I just closed the door and didn't say nothing. I would say the following Sunday afternoon, my wife went to church at 6 p.m., and I stayed home to watch TV. About 45 minutes later, I was laying on the couch watching TV, when something had blacked out my window at the far end of my trailer. The window was one foot wide and three feet tall. I had raised up to look out my picture window above the couch and it turned the corner and walked around the steps at the back door. It was looking off into the woods and as it kept walking, it looked at the ground. Understand this though, I had clear plastic on my window to keep heat in from winter. Hadn't taken it down yet, when it got to the window, I had already laid back down on the couch, looking up and lay still. It looked down at me and kept walking, hopefully. I laid there for about as long as I could stand maybe a minute. Then I got off the couch by sliding on the floor, went and got my gun walked back in the living room and waited a minute, then went outside making all noise I could. I checked the back of the trailer, nothing there. Details of Bigfoot is as follows, he was about 7 feet tall maybe 7 feet point three. Solid black, no white or brown that I could see. Remember the plastic. His head was more rounded and not cone-shaped. I could not see the color of his eyes or anything like that. He was broad-shouldered and thinner around the waist than what you usually see in the pictures and he walked more upright, not humped over like a gorilla. His hands hung around his thighs. The next morning around 10 AM, I got up from bed as I worked 2 RD. Shift then. My wife told me a friend of mine had come down to see me. I asked what did he want. She said she only saw him as the top of his head went across the kitchen window. We had to set the trailer on four blocks high and three on the other end, which meant you could not see anyone walking in front of the trailer, not out the kitchen window anyway. I told her my friend was 6FT4 and with a hat on you could not see him the way she had told me. We lived on rocky ground but I had one dusty dirt spot at the end of the trailer. Hoping he had walked in it. I checked and in the middle was a footprint. It was about 12 and a half inches long and 3 and a half to 4 inches wide at the heel. Being dust it was only one quarter deep. There were only three toes which I did not understand at the time. I told some friends at work and one came to see it. The following Friday or Saturday night, he and a friend of his came over, no drinking sorry. And I told them the whole story. My friend was not hard to convince but his friend started talking big. So I told them let's go outside. Joking around to see how brave he was when we heard two dogs about medium to small size started barking and chasing something on the other ridge behind my trailer. Which was not far at all, maybe 200 yards they chased it into the small valley about 50 yards south of us. When one dog quit barking, the other gave one more than it was quiet. Stunned, we looked at each other and Bigfoot started running back towards us. It stopped about 80 yards from us and started to hit a tree with something that sounded like a branch about 4 to 5 inches thick. 
Then it ran closer to about 40 yards. And done the same thing again. By this time all bravery was gone. I went back in the trailer and got my gun. Come back out and asked if anything had happened. The brave guy thought he might had seen something in the shadow south of us, light was on of course. They took the gun away from me and I didn't mind, thinking I had a way of escape. But we heard nothing else. My nearest neighbor is about 250 yards away. Mother-in-law, no one else for at least a mile. No reason to mess with us that I could even think of. That was the last I have seen or heard of him. My encounter occurred 20 or so years ago, way before what I saw even had a name. My encounter with what you call Dog Man happened one afternoon as my family and I were returning home from shopping in town. I was living in a little town in East Texas at the time and we lived about 10 solid minutes from any real signs of civilization. The town itself at the time had a population of around 500 and it took 10 minutes of dirt road driving just to get to the gas station slash general store. The nearest town was called Lufkin and its population at the time was around 30k. We were heading home and we were on the first part of the longest dirt road we had to travel down. There were several large hills that would make your stomach churn if you hit them too fast. We had just gone over the first one of them on our journey home, when I saw something up ahead. At first, I thought it was a deer. It was large and brown, and was jumping over a barbed wire fence on the right side of the road. It leapt over the barbed wire fence and managed to not only clear the fence, but landed roughly in the middle of the road. This already made me perk up a little, as that was an impressive jump. Even if it was a deer. As we got closer. Whatever this was took another impressive lunge and made its way to the other side of the road. Just shy of the barbed wire fence on the other side. It never stopped, but continued up the embankment. I could swear that as it propelled itself up the side, it looked back at us, over its left shoulder. As if it were deciding who slash what we were. Not sure. About 15 years ago, my wife, and two children were leaving our home in Honeycomb, just north of Guntersville off of Highway 431 at the bottom of Grant, Alabama. We were en route to Walmart. About 8 to 9 p.m. probably midsummer. A well-lit seems full moon night. We lived for me. Around past the lake in Honeycomb. I was driving my old hot rod a 1964 Ford. There are some persons by the last name of, name removed by investigator, WHO always have dogs in the street at their house by the lake. The road white elephant RD. Run by the water's edge in front of their home. The road is about 4 FT off of the shoreline. The, name removed by investigator, S had two St. Bernard dogs along with their other dogs. That particular night driving past I saw in the water walking away from the road and shore a large 8FT Sasquake. I looked back in my rearview mirror, and still turned around to look THRU my back glass. My wife saw my dismay, and quickly asked what's wrong, she at that time looked back, I always drive slow by their house as the dogs are always in the road, so she had time to look, all she saw was the ripples in the water, as we passed a few trees. It was a full moon night, and no wind calm waters. Now what I saw was the 8FT Sasquatch carrying one of the St. Bernard heads. I in the time that drove by slowly saw the Bigfoot from the knees up, carrying the head of the dog, some flesh was hanging from the neck area. The head was in the Bigfoot's left hand. He was carrying IT from the dog hair at the top of the dog head. I said to my wife at that time that if one of those dogs came up missing that the Sasquatch was the reason why. However both dogs came up missing and we never saw them again after that time. Now story up to date. Telling the story to many persons in the years passing, as people tell stories, I finally told the guys at the TVA where I work as a contractor for the government. My relationship with Mr. Name removed by investigator is just knowing each other from the window of our vehicle as we would wave to one another, 
as our children rode the school bus with each other. I finally one day about four YRS ago asked him what happened to his dogs, and told him the story of what I saw. He said one of the dogs died in Huntsville, Alabama at his mother's home, and the other died at his home in Honeycomb and he buried IT behind his house. Now, I didn't push the issue of letting me dig up the dog's core as it would be kind of tacky. But if you guys want to contact me and send some investigators to check and see if Mr. Name removed by investigator would allow you to dig up the core to see if its head is missing, you may get some clues or even some hair form the Sasquatch. However, if the head is still attached, then I was hallucinating the whole thing, and my wife would just imagine the water ripples too. I don't do drugs or smoke dope, and didn't at that time either. The only thing running THRU my veins is good wholesome Native American blood. I would love to participate in pursuing this investigation if there will be one. My stepdad lived in Virginia when he was around the age of eight. Right on the edge of the Great Dismal Swamp. According to him, he was in bed one night when the sky was cloudless, or just very bright, he never thought until recently whether the moon was shining, or not, and saw a beast looking right through his window at him. He said, he could see spittle running down its face and its eyes were looking straight at him. It was supposedly standing on its hind legs and had cream, red, and brown colored, matted fur and a face almost like a wolf. Other than its snout, its facial features were very human. Its jaw bones were high, the structure around its eyes and its eyes themselves were human esquire the coloring of its eyes, he believes, were yellow. The reason why I think this is interesting and possibly valid is because, the Great Dismal Swamp covers a huge amount of territory and is hardly touched by humans. Only in recent years have people started to study its inhabitants. The grounds are wet, mossy, and absorb sound. And people have been known to wander into it and never return. Who knows what could be lurking in the unknown. Chills my bones. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention that he crawled out of his bed and went straight to his mother's room. In the morning, when they looked around the house, all the windows had ground that was stirred up under them and grass that was yanked out. There were actual scratches in the wood under his window, and paint was missing too. However, as far as they could see, there were no discernible footprints. My first encounter happened late at night, while driving home to Snohomish from Sultan. The two towns being about 10 miles apart. I was with my mother and we had just finished dropping a friend off at her home in Sultan. It was late October and there was an unusual storm going on that night that everyone talked about the following day. Tremendous cloud to cloud lightning and a very cold dry wind with no rain. Bright flashes of light loud thunder and lots of leaves blowing around. After dropping our friend off, we were on a stretch of the road that's very dark, with farmland on either side of the highway, Highway 2, and both sides having densely wooded hills. We were driving a 1991 Honda Accord and at this one particular spot in the road, something caught my eye, off to the left side, which was a farm field and there was a break in the guardrail for a dirt road going into the field. Right when we were even to this break, I saw what looked like a huge dog coming up, and right then, it ran in front of our car and I hit it. We could see the top of its back, which we both swear looked more like a hyena at this point than a dog. It had to be huge to see its back over the hood of the car, when you're sitting pretty low to the ground in a Honda Accord. Its fur was shaggy brown and mottled with dark spots, just like a hyena and its front seemed higher up than its back. The headlights lit it up as it ran right in front of our car and we could feel it get hit, but didn't see it go either up in the air or off to the right side of the car. It was running from the left side of the highway to the right. We were driving westward. It sent my car into an uncontrollable swerve back and forth into the oncoming lane and I just prayed that I could get it under control, to keep from getting into a head-on collision with what looked like maybe a Ford Aerostar van. A calmness came over me and I felt like my guardian angel had taken control of the steering, 
because we missed the van by just a few inches. After going a little ways further, we were both so shook up I pulled off to the side. My mother wanted to go look for the dog, because we both love animals and felt bad about hitting something. But, I had a bad feeling about looking for this dog, because it had looked so strange and I was afraid of it. It was dark and stormy. It didn't feel safe and I just wanted to get home. We got back in the car and stopped at a little gas station. When we first got into Monroe, which is the next town between our town and Sultan. We got out, to look at the front of my car, thinking surely there would be some evidence of hitting something that large, we were going the highway speed when we hit it which is 60 miles per hour, like a dent, some fur or blood, but there was nothing there. Not a scratch. The whole thing had a very supernatural feel to it. The look of this dog which was huge and looked more like a hyena just didn't seem right. Neither did the timing of it running in front of us, like it wanted to make us stop on that dark stretch of road and get out of my car, which we did, but we got right back in. I never saw it on two legs. It ran on all fours, but there was something so calculated about the way it came up to the highway and looked at our car and ran in front of it. It seemed planned. It was such a strange electromagnetic type of storm that night too. The next day, People we knew that lived miles and miles apart in many different directions all talked about the storm and one particularly loud thunderclap, that shook everyone's homes. They all thought it was directly over their house but they were all miles apart. I have three more encounters which occurred after this first one. I'm pretty sure this happened October 1997. No later than 1998. When I was a kid, I had a terrifying experience which although I have grown out of, I still remember it and it kind of bring me chills. One day I was sleeping, and had the habit of covering my face while sleeping, I woke in the middle of the night somewhere between 2 hours or 3 hours, so I took the cover off cause it was hot and then I saw a huge dark figure with big horns standing in the middle of the room. I was terrified and screamed from the fear and immediately covered my face under the blanket which I stayed under crying from fear till morning. When I had the courage to take off the cover I was relieved that nothing was there anymore. I always thinking that maybe I am just imagining because your brain can play tricks on you in the darkness and I was specifically scared of the idea of ghosts and demons and was afraid to sleep alone as a kid, so maybe it was not real. But what I can tell you is that I was not dreaming that night and what I described is exactly what I saw. If any had any experiences like this share, it is good to talk about it so we can feel better move on, cause ever since that time I didn't experience any of that not even sleep paralysis, so whatever it is, it feeds over your fear or it is just a fearful kid's hallucination in the dark. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.